All right, as we try to take ourselves seriously, we're talking about condiments, but we're going to an actual conversation now. Another fun one, boys. Yep. And this time, Ooh. we're professional. We're going to play a round of agree or disagree. But guys, you have signs this time. Wow. Here we go. Hey. And why you play this game, if anybody doesn't know. Thank you, sir. We, uh, we Curtis, our up. man, will read a statement. And when he reads it, you got to either agree and then we'll talk or disagree and the comments will get heated. All right. So last time we said the PlayStation 2 was a little overrated and... Uh, not too many happy fans about that. So I, I've still been trying to think of my favorite PS2 game ever since that. <laughs> Brutality. I did come up with Resident Evil 4, though. I was like, damn, that was a good PS2. Yeah, that was oh, a good one. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to let you one. slide on that D word for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be all right with that. All right, we're going to go with our first all one. Right. Of agree, of dis, uh, agree or disagree. All right. And it's going to be pizza is better than burgers. This is a high production studio. I love these signs, baby. Okay, we got one agree. We got one disagree. Waiting on Chris. I'm going to disagree. A disagree. Okay. I I love pizza, but man, I love burgers. Burgers are just so good. The, The meat. Dude, that's what makes it for me. I had to really think about that one and envision t- eating pizza, <laughs> you and guys eating pause. burgers, <laughs> and one. burgers. I feel like well, there's just so many more. Uh, there's man, there's so many options with pizza too. Well, I, but I, burgers I, have a lot of different options. I loved burgers for a super long time, and I still do. But I feel like as I've gotten older, they've kind of slid down in the ranks. You know, they're, they're, the pizza is kind of holding that stronger spot for me. But I think that's because I discovered a certain type. I think it's feta cheese on pizza. Oh. And it, it changed my life. No way, dude. Pizza is a, a, the best. I'm going to tell you right now. I watch Dave Portnoy reviews for uh, one slice. And it, you can eat pizza. You need to get out more, Chris. Anywhere. That's all Curtis eats is pizza. Dude, that's all he, You guys already know this. Have you had a burger before, Curtis? <laughs> dude, meat and bun. That's about it, dude. <laughs> Nothing. A <laughs> little bit of cheese on it, I guess, every once in a while. Just spice it up. We can tell. <laughs> it also depends. Like, There's some times where you want Burgers more than pizza. Or pizza I don't know. More. Pizza. Whatever. Pizza all the way. All right. We're going to move on to the second one. Uh, the 2023 Super Mario movie is the best video game movie of all time. Ooh. Oh, I like I'm going to say agree, but I'm shedding a little tear for the Silent Hill movie. Silent <laughs> Hill was a really good movie. Ricky's got an agree up. Yeah. You're Come agreeing on. with it? I, dude, I loved it. Man, I loved it. Chris the I'm, procrastinator. Oh, man, I agree with <laughs> okay. it. I had to yeah. really think about right. that. Woo. Man, I loved it. I, Absolutely loved it. I just saw it two days ago with my family. Okay. And we were the whole time throughout the movie just like, this thing is amazing. I, I'm loved with you. It. I think that it hits so hard into, right? N- Nintendo is such an all-encompassing thing. Anybody can love it. Young, old, don't care about Mario, do care about Mario. But for people like us who are like diehard video game people, the amount of Easter eggs and fan service that went into it was quite literally unbelievable to me. Like I was like, okay, I know I heard that there's a lot of fan service. How long is this going to take to hear some? And the minute it started, the second it started, I just hear Bowser's ship theme for me from Mario three is where I recognize it most. And I'm just like, it's beginning. I mean, there is. I went crazy when Kid Icarus, when he was playing Kid oh, Icarus. That was so cool. like, of all games. And I was the only one in the theater. My wife and my son were like, quiet, dad, quiet, dad. I was like, Kid Icarus. <laughs> Kid. I was like almost shouting it out. I kept calling out Easter eggs, too. And my, I've, I've got a, a hard squeeze on the thigh from my wife after a while. Like, please stop. Because I'd be like, oh, did you see the, the R-Wing that's on top of the TV? Did you see the Captain Falcon poster inside of the room? And everyone's just like, she's like, shh, shh, shh. Did no, you but... notice the Jumpman one? Yes, I did. The Jumpman Excellent. one was such and a And the guy good working on Jumpman that was, was the original awesome. Mario voice. His right? original is Charles Martinet, and so yeah. was his dad. And they they paid homage to Charles Martinet, too, which was cool. Yep, it was great. Like, he had a couple lines in it, yep. so I I loved it. Me, too. I'm with you. Oh, yeah. And I, when I watched it, it was like, I loved that it made reference to those 80s music, too, or it was just like, it wasn't just a kid's movie. I'm telling you right now, was I was giddy, and my wife was, too, and she doesn't even care about video games. I, I love that it was clean on all levels, too, right? Not saying that's what makes a movie perfect, but, like, anybody can watch it of any stance on anything in the world and be like, that was nice. That did, was enjoyable. You know what's crazy about that movie? I don't. Did anybody look at the reviews? Oh, dude, I, I couldn't believe yeah, the yeah, critics. Yeah. The critics' reviews couldn't believe it. were unbelievable. Well, have you also seen the critics' reviews in the past few years giving the dumbest crap 90%? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I never normally follow that. Yeah. But I, just to comment on it for a minute. So the, the fan reviews on that movie are 96%. Fant- so fans awesome. loved it. People. The critics' reviews and were absolutely ridiculous. I had to read it because they gave it 58%. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, why? So I read through them, a few of them, and they were like, 
just caters to the fan base. Doesn't like it wasn't oh, no. artistic enough for them. Or <laughs> Doing something. it right, and I know. And I'm like, that's <laughs> what is the point of you guys as critics? If you look at this, yeah. and fans love this so much. Yeah. How did you miss the boat? They so have a specific thing they want to see out of it, right? To check their marks and then go, it's good. But they can't just let it be a good movie the way that we enjoy so. I guess, yeah, absolutely useless. Why critics. do we need those critics? We don't I know. Need them. Seriously, <laughs> we don't need them. useless. Age of you two, we don't. Everything's need them. an opinion. But anyway, we're gonna move on to the next one. Uh, Contra is the greatest running gun series. Ooh, running gun. <laughs> running gun. I got a dislike up for those right. audio listeners. God, this one's hard. These guys are just, thinkers today. Just, just because of what it meant to me for as a child. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. Okay. That. You guys just are logging in. So okay. two agrees, one disagree? You disagree? I, I disagree, and I'm not saying it's far back. I'd say, you know, Metal Slug, uh, Contra is probably number two the series. I think Contra 3, The Alien Wars, is one of the greatest things we've ever got in the world. But I will say, as of recently, Cuphead took that spot for me. Oh. And it just, yeah. it, it really... Again, I love all the the Contras and the Metal Slugs and all those type of games. But when Cuphead came out, I think it stimulated me visually in a way that I just wasn't expect. A game that made me feel so like nostalgic and classic for running game, running gun games, but with the look of just something I wasn't expecting to see in something like that. And it took my love of like animation and like old Disney and all that stuff and just made me be like, dude, this is good, super good. Cuphead is pretty amazing. I did love Cuphead. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that when we, when that when we were talking run and gun. So that is pretty amazing. But I'm with Ricky that yeah. Contra for me when I was a kid was yeah, that's... literally mind blowing. Like yeah. I could play that over and over yep. and over again. How excited were you when you found out the code though? The Konami oh. code. Oh my gosh. It, was it, a, it? Did, did you have to have the Konami Konami code? I'm trying to think if I ever beat it without. It. I don't think I ever did. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty tough. You did either of you guys beat it? I, I beat it. I can beat it. I can I beat it. With three lives. Remember, yeah. I can still beat it. Well, check this out. And Ricky knows this. I can perfect run Contra 3 The Alien Wars on hard. So That wow. game is yeah, near is impossible. But then again, I also perfect run Cuphead. <laughs> And that's not me. This isn't a flex. This is me saying those are the games I'm good at. You perfect ran Cuphead? Yeah. Did you know that's why tattoo? I had a tattoo of it? Stop it. When I perfect ran Cuphead. No deaths. Not one touch. Nothing. What? Not a touch. Stop. I swear on my life. How I long did that take you? It. it didn't take me long at all. That's the scary thing. I've told this story. Yeah. I beat King I've Dice. I've heard this story. I beat Bro. King Dice, the second to last boss. I was playing the game one time through. It didn't take me that long. I beat King Dice, who was very hard, very difficult. You go through a bunch of different enemies. And when I beat him, I was like, whoa, I beat him. And all of a sudden, it's like, boom, shoom, platinum award popped up. I'm like, oh, what did I get? And it's like, no, no touch. Went to like unhit. And I was like, I didn't get hit on that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should try to perfect run the game. And that's when I was like, if I can perfect run the game, I'll get the tattoo. And I did it. What? I like the way you're looking at me. I, I, I've, never seen, I've, I've never seen you look at me with so much respect. <laughs> so I was much like, respect. oh my gosh, this feels so good. Well, because I watch a lot of those videos, like yeah. the perfect runs and the speed runs. Yeah. Like I've really gotten into those. And even yeah. the Contra, like no hit, no death one on the original NES one. I'm super impressed with that. I yeah. don't normally seek that stuff out, but with, with, Running gun, running gun, side scrollers, platformers. That's 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 really where I shine. But like fighting games, I suck. And uh, third person, like open world games, I suck. I'm horrible. Racing games, I'm horrible. Last place Mario Kart every time. So I'll I'll brag where I can brag. I think my <laughs> yeah. biggest accomplishment is the. I think it was Resident Evil One. You had to was it Resident Evil One? You had to beat it with no deaths. Oh, I think it was no deaths at all. No deaths, no saves. Wow. And uh, you unlocked, I believe, Hunk. You familiar with that? Oh yeah. It was really and as a kid I, I did that. that. So that I think that's my biggest accomplishment. Which that, is pretty hey, hard to know, do. Well, I, I don't even know if that's hard, but I'm gonna give you a, I know you need this. <laughs> right, like you that. need this. That was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank we're you. gonna move on to the next one. <laughs> Success comes from hard work and dedication. I mean Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Course. Need to. Let's I go. will say that I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that are like, I've been trying this my whole life, and, I've, and I'm sure that's true, right? I know people are like, I've been trying since day one. I've been working hard. I've been hustling, but I'm still failing. I'm still failing, you know, and I'm not going to say that you, there isn't excuses for that or you can or can't make excuses for that, but I'll say that staying successful, you know, running, you know, your own business. I run my own corporation now. You guys are successful guys. It's a lot, a lot of work, and I get it that it can happen people can be born into an easier lifestyle or people can be born into a, a worse lifestyle i know that's all true but i firmly believe 
keep going, keep working hard, find new ways, reinvent yourself, reinvent your your hard work, your dedication. And I, I truly feel like that's a stronghold for not always, but that can hold you for you know, success. I agree okay. with that. Yeah. Cause I mean, I feel like I've had to reevaluate the way I see my work ethic. Right. Because mm. at times you just fall into a slump and yeah. at other times. And it's like, I met these guys and I was like, Oh, I gotta be better. I gotta Ooh, be at this you. standard. You know That's what I mean? You to say, Curtis. Oh yeah, I look up to you guys like you don't you don't even know. Curtis, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you bro. Curtis. <laughs> Find you dinner tonight. Well, <laughs> I, I agree with that statement, and um, it has been a lot of hard work to get where I'm at. Totally. And, and I love one of the things I love more than anything now is really like working with younger guys. Like Curtis, you're quite a bit younger than us. Late twenties. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and kind mm-hmm. of mentoring like younger people that want to maybe quit their job, do their own business. I love working with entrepreneurs. And um, startup entrepreneurs, younger guys that want to do that, or or girls, and hard work is certainly a part of it. There's a lot of other aspects of to course. it, but you can't get anywhere without the hard work. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's a, I mean, it's a lot of work, day in, day out, kind of work. Absolutely. You, you know, another thing I noticed is it's it's like hard work, but it's also like the way you look at it, like your mentality. Like if you're doing hard work and you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering here, it's like you're not gonna, you're never gonna feel accomplished. You have to kind of yeah feel good about it. Like, dude, I'm telling you, Riff. He, he always has like a good way of putting it in life. Like, a, how would you say? It? It's like he always lo- he always looks at it the other way. Glass it's, half full. Exactly. Very Instead optimistic half, too. Half exactly. And if you don't see it like that, that's when. And that's the way I look at success too is right. Success means different things to different people. And I think if you can wake up on us with a smile on your face, you know, that is success. But in terms of work, you got to look at it too. Some people look at it and go, well, I'm not there yet because they're looking at they're here and they're looking at there. Which yep. is good. You have those goals in mind. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. But when those baby steps happen, sometimes you're like, well, I'm unsuccessful. I'm on this. I'm like, I'm like, dude, even if you got, you know, you, you bumped your happiness to this level or your pay rate to this level or your, your subscriber count, if it's YouTube to this level, those are all steps in the bigger picture. So yep. Yep. I, I tend to refer to them as bricks. Like you're building a wall steps, yep. bricks, but I like, like that, there's yeah. little bricks. And I, every single day that I'm working chip away with a few different tasks. And every day you're building a little brick, little brick, little Heck brick. Yeah, man. And then, you know, people look at me and be like, well, how'd you end up with five stores? I'm like a million bricks. bricks. Yep. I laid a million bricks to get here. Tetris, I got you. Tetris from the other right. That's the key to success. <laughs> that, <laughs> just, that was just perfect. Just playing perfect. Tetris. <laughs> You'll All be right. fine. Yo, I mean, this one's a little personal, but I mean, you Uh-oh. guys better not get this wrong. Summer is the best season. Ooh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, 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 take off bro. that shirt of the summer. Bro, what do you hate? <laughs> bro, what do you hate my me? summer <laughs> shirt on. So, by the way, we had two thumbs up from Ricky and I, and then uh, Chris with the thumbs down. What, what, what's your favorite season? So, I'm from the East Coast. So, on the East Coast, summers are good. You're always miserable. But they're, they're hot. <laughs> I mean, out here, you, yes, probably summers are great. But from the East Coast, in my opinion, fall, by far, is the best Fall's great. season. Yeah, fall's really the, the leaves change, crisp air. Yeah. It's like cooling down a little bit. September is amazing. Yeah. You can still go to the beach yep. there's so, it, it's really more the air more than anything something about the crispness of the air and the smell on the east coast is unbelievable i bet i bet actually and we're again we're california so how are we going to say no to summer i am a summer fanatic i mean i am i don't wear shirts i'm, I'm lucky i buttoned even this button i was like <laughs> debating, i was debating being like down here like, <laughs> my, my, what did my wife call me today? She called me a Miami Vice. And I watched, she's like, easy there, Miami Vice. And I was like, thank you. Dude, when, I, when you walked in, that's literally, I thought of uh, Miami Vice, the <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. I was like, yeah. That's a good oh, shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, like that one hurt a little bit, shirt. Chris, because it's my last name. But it's all right. It's all right. We'll just move oh, on yeah, to the next Summers, one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This one's a good one. The MCU is the greatest movie franchise. Greatest and you got to think about what you're comparing it to. Franchise. So. Anything. <laughs> right. Right. I, I mean, I get what you're saying. I feel like I, I got a thumb, you got a thumbs down for the audio list. I got a thumbs me. down. Got Ricky and Rick. Ricky's got Let a thumbs down. Let me just think for one minute. Uh, I don't know Chris is still that. thinking. Man. <laughs> <laughs> On the fly, uh, Franchise, I'm going to agree with that. Okay, you're saying. So the reason I put a thumbs down, I'll be honest, is um, I think things go in waves of good franchises. I think I'm not a, I've already said before, I don't like Marvel currently. Um, I, I, there was like a, that period of Marvel that I think where, where I'll say it peaked, which was like the end game where they yeah. all came together, right? Big epic moment. Here's this guy. Here's this superhero bubble. Everybody's together. Oh my God. The whole internet's going crazy. And then it happened and it's over. And now I'm like, all right, stop trying to like, st-. It, it just felt like, it, okay, let, let's pump the brakes, create something new. Then let's go back to it again. I just felt like it, it kept going. But for me, if I have to like compare it to anything, I mean, I'd almost put. 
I don't like it that much at all anymore. I'd put Jurassic Park above it. I'd put Star Wars above it. I'd put Indiana Jones above it. I'd put The Matrix above it, you know? So that's just personal. I was trying to think of other ones, but I don't... See, I still would stick with mine. Okay, I, yeah, I, I like still it. like Marvel. Do you have one better than Marvel? I'm ch- that's the funny thing is I, I'm, I'm like him. I loved it. Like, if you were to ask me this three four years ago I'd yeah be like, oh marvel for sure you're a bigger now, marvel guy than i am by yeah, far yeah and dude i i you don't understand i love marvel but i don't know the, the last ones i've been watching i've just been so eh. it's definitely t- tailored off for me it's yeah. not as big as it was but i i mean all the way back to like when blade came out initially oh. which is still one of my favorite blade movies. is amazing like i love blade, blade People sometimes amazing. forget blade that that was yeah. like one of the first marvel yeah. movies but then from there I, when they when they did Endgame, like, and they included Thanos. That yeah. was my favorite comic book of yeah. all time. I think I might have talked about it before, but Infinity Gauntlet yeah. with that series is my favorite comic. So when they touched on that, I was ecstatic. There you go. Uh-huh. And it's that high still has. Would a- you snap the world to in existence if you could? I, I was not opposed to what he did. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to the next one. <laughs> he had good intentions. <laughs> he did. They all do. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to get one more on the list is Silent Hill is better than Resident Evil. Oh, we got a thumbs up from me, Riff. Yeah, Chris has got a one. solid that's thumbs no, down. No Ricky's got a thumbs down. I mean, it's cool that you guys have wrong answers. It's good. <laughs> well, I was like, yeah. that's a no brainer. You're totally wrong over this. So, uh, <laughs> what, explain, explain yourself. Resident Evil is is one of my favorite Why? games of all time. Okay. Resident Evil One. That's first of all, one. when it came out. I believe came out way before any Silent Hill. So it's great. It's one of the first. That is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Silent Hills. I've played a couple of them, but I haven't even played them. That yeah, it's for many. like intellectuals. Ricky, what about you? <laughs> Resident Evil Four. <laughs> Hold it for me. That's a great one. The, the original, the GameCube one, though. That's literally yeah. my one favorite of the best horror game games ever. The remake. The I have. I didn't. I haven't played the remake yet. Oh, the I'm one on about the original. No, he's a the retro remake gamer, of GameCube. Bro. Uh, Resident Evil One. Oh, you're talking about Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is my, like... My stance on this is this. I I love Resident Evil. Don't get me wrong at all. But Silent Hill, to me, is so elevated when it comes to storytelling for me. And I'm a big storytelling guy. I... Uh, the stories that happen in that movie, finding your daughter who's disappeared and willing to do anything for her, the different... By the way, Stranger Things, anybody who's known who's seen Silent Hill... It's pretty much a ripoff with the upside down. It's like the same thing. But Silent Hill can not only make it doesn't make me jump scare. It makes me feel truly scared. Like I don't want to be in the room. I don't want to turn off the light. I don't want to. I'm 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 truly nervous. I get emotional playing it. So to me, that's the kind of horror. Like, but I don't get me wrong. I love Resident Evil. I, I totally love it. But Silent Hill to me is not to me. To everybody who's smart, it's better. <laughs> right, it sounds like a very simple plot. Right, the gonna... daughter goes missing, oh. trying to find the daughter. <laughs> There's a bunch of fog. It's like a Taken movie over here. <laughs> okay, Mr. Uh, virus broke out. <laughs> yeah. Umbrella's Wait, like the real. most. Who's the, bad, who's, the, who's the bad guy? Fauci and Resident Evil? All right. I'm going to jail. All right, do you guys do me dirty on this one. Curtis is the ugliest in the group. <laughs> I am by far. No, I'm going to disagree no. with that, Curtis. Oh, Get go out on. of here. You guys, I had to hear everyone agree. No, <laughs> we're not disagreeing with that, Curtis. Ooh, all right. We're going to go into transition topic two, everybody. And it's going to be about childhood toys and stories about them. Now, oh, man. what was oh. one of your favorite childhood toys that you can remember that really stays with you? Ricky? One of you guys. Bro, one of the, the probably... They weren't even mine. They were my neighbors. It was my Hasbro, his his Hasbro wrestlers. I loved watching WWF and playing with those toys at the same time at his house. It mm. was, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, uh, dude, I, I loved it. I, I, can't, I can't explain it. I, I love watching Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, and uh, Ultimate Warrior, Brett the Hitman Heart. Something about just playing that with my buddy just... With the toys. With the toys. I, I loved it. Uh, dude, I didn't have many toys. Most of my toys were like, I barely had Ninja Turtles. So I I, I love Ninja Turtles, but I, I never got the full. Did you get world. the bootlegs? Funny story. I did get a, the, <laughs> my one of my favorite toys was a bootleg. Uh, here, I'll, I'll start it off. It was Easter. And I remember I was, I was just waking up. My dad had dropped off a basket for me at my house. Aww. And it was this ginormous He-Man like this. I guess it was a Mexican He-Man. 
But <laughs> hey, man, those are expensive. Was, now. Hey, it took me like, one he, man. Hey, it's it's the power. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, to me, it was the coolest thing ever. And dude, it was flimsy. It was everything. Oh, it was great. like horrible, but I love I loved it. Like as a kid, I loved it. I, Cause I find I found it again like recently at, at Totu's place. He had it. Oh, that's awesome. And it was dude, I can't believe I didn't break it right off the bat because the arms almost came off when I picked it up. Uh, but I found well, one of those at the swap. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I'm just curious. It was this big. Dude, it, it was, was huge. huge. It was huge. Like I, I'd be playing with it, and my aunt, like my aunt was like uh, like three, four years older than me. She had Barbie. So I'm like, oh, look at me. I got like a can, but he's like buffed up. That's amazing. <laughs> That's really awesome. I was at the swap meet a while ago and I found a bootleg He-Man and I didn't pick it up. It was a He-Man and uh, a Battle Cat. And I got roasted in the comments for not picking it up. Everyone's like, dude, that's dude, worth a lot of money. That's, the bootlegs. This, this. And I was like, I didn't know that. I've had those come into the store before, the He-Man, the bootleg ones. And I remember spending forever trying to figure out what this was. Mm. And it turns <laughs> out they're just bootlegs. There's like no history on any of those things. Yeah, no, there's not. Um, it's because I looked it up during that when I saw him. I was like, let me look this up. And I'm like, I don't know how to Google search this and like find this. And I'm like, is yeah. this even He Man? And then when the comments came, I got roasted completely. But speaking of He Man, that is my favorite childhood oh, nice. memory. I That's am a He Man great. guy in and out. I still collect He Man, love them. Um, I've been trying to actually start just collecting like the in box He Man figures, which is kind of a pricey thing. I was going to say, how are the prices <laughs> wow. right now on Kermit? He, Kermit. Current <laughs> He Man market. I mean, I bought one the other day at WonderCon. It was the, I think, two. Two heads one uh -huh. um yeah. in box it was 60 bucks but i think it was like a couple hundred bucks online got it wow. you but didn't do yourself nice. any favors right now i'm saying yeah i'm super in he-man you know i got two heads one green mario <laughs> well see i mean even as a kid i don't remember all of their names yeah, yeah. i remember leech you know leech was one of my favorite ones he was the green guy that you could stick yeah that's what we used to call curtis when he started coming around the swap <laughs> <laughs> facts i'm just kidding bro. but my memory is my favorite memory is yeah. like um i used to take all my he-man toys set up castle grayskull huge oh. battles gi joe would get involved those guys would get wrecked yeah. and then i would take them in like the bathtub with me like i remember sticking leech like on the shower thing and oh, just that's huge awesome. epic battles man i wish i could afford the real toys. ones <laughs> <laughs> mine was um i don't know what series and i probably should have looked it up before because it was definitely my biggest like if i had to pick like that moment in my childhood where it was like that perfect toy morning you know i've talked about before we didn't have a lot of money growing up but there was one year where my dad apparently got this big bonus and my dad just wanted to go like all out right so one year it was christmas you know the classic you know cold outside wake up brothers and i are waking up literally in like onesies you know shouldn't have been wearing onesies but that's what we we're wearing and i just remember walking out and my parents were not fans of i know some people like leaving presents out like where you can see them uh, and we're big believers in, you know, having them wrap. That's just kind of what we did. Had them wrap one by one, open it. But this year, my dad was like, let's go crazy. Let's get the kids this. And I walked out and it was just, I'm telling you, I think my dad spent a thousand dollars on Batman toys wow. and it was unbelievable. And the one that sticks out the most is I remember, no, there's two that stuck out the most. Oh, maybe they're the same. They are the same one. It was the Batman in the shiny night outfit. He was like all silver metallic mm -hmm. and I got the horse to go with it. I can't remember what that line is called, but that's what most of them were. There was like other uh, types in there as well. I think like Batman Adventures as well, because, you know, there's not that many to equal like a thousand bucks worth. But I just remember going out there and being like, my goodness, it was one of those things where when you, you, you watch my ritual life, you know, and you see the old videos, I'm like, that's the one in my head that I'll forever. It, it's so elevated in my head that I almost can't remember other. I know there was what other Christmas is like getting what toys. Because like I know I own Ninja Turtles, but I literally can't remember like opening them on Christmas. I don't I don't remember. But when I think about that, I'm like that all of my brain power goes there. I have no memory of opening any of my He-Man toys. Really? I don't remember opening them. Somehow I had them. I don't remember opening G.I. Joe figures. Is that figures. good or is that sad? I don't know. I remember the playing with them, but I don't remember the opening part. Oh. I, yeah, I don't either. Like, I have I remember no recollection of that. I remember like the consoles. I remember opening my console consoles, but not the toys it's it, yeah our house I'm, i remember opening because we're pretty uh, i don't know why it's like a thing in our house my wife and i are very adamant about like opening presents one by one and i think Us that's too. how i grew up too yeah like i'm not a fan no shame to anybody if they do but like when we go like we go oh my oh my 
other people don't listen to this that I know. Like I'll go to see certain people and they just start shredding the pack and the kids don't even, they don't even blink at the gifts. And I'm like devastated. I'm like, man, I'm not teaching. You're not, I'm not calling anybody out, not teaching gratitude, like for each, you know, appreciating each yeah. item. We appreciate to open one at a time. Say, thank you. One at a time. Yes. Who gave it to you? Right. Appreciate hey, right it. Right on bro. Yeah. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. Ricky, you too. Yeah, I do one of the Oh, right on it, Curtis. You guys got presents? Oh, <laughs> Curtis is like, I didn't no. get anything. Uh, no, of course, I'm very appreciative of like another, anything I got. Another good one of my favorites was, I think I've told Ricky the story before, is when I got Mario paint as a kid. And it was another Christmas morning, and we got, you know, it was a, just a normal Christmas. We got the Super Nintendo, super hype, super rad. Then we got the Mario paint, and it was the big box. We got the big box Mario paint. Oh, my gosh, it's Christmas morning. My brothers were in a drawing. We're both kind of like artistic. <laughs> And my brother's like, I call first, I call dibs. And the first thing my brother did, he didn't draw, he didn't play with anything. He just quickly found the animation studio. And he's like, dude, you can animate stuff. And I'm like, that's amazing. This is so sick. Technology's advanced so far. And I leave the house. I go play outside with like a bike or something for 20 minutes. I come back in and my mom's like, oh, come look. Adam drew something he wants to show us all. And we're gathering around. Yay, Adam! I'm like, let's see what he drew. He animated me getting run over by a car. I was, say, I was like, he drew you. And my parents took away our Super Nintendo oh. and Mario Paint for two weeks. Wait, it was it was not just a picture. It was it was like an animated there was thing. Blood. Like the car. No, there was yeah. The meh, car meh. moves. And I'm just like, oh. that's and I'm talent, like, bro. What is? That's a brother. That's a, that's a brother. <laughs> by all means for you. Uh, all right. Well, that's is there a hilarious. toy that you guys are like on the lookout for? Like when you go out to the swaps rather than buy online? Mm, yes. Ricky, Ricky's a toy guy. What you got, Ricky? Uh, that giant Galactus that just came out, the Marvel Legends. It's about this big. Seriously? Yeah, I'm going to get it. It's like a huge scale. One. It's a huge scale. It's like three feet tall. It's a it's a new wow. Galactus. It's a new Galactus. Because I have the old one that it was a pretty big yeah. Galactus. No, this Which is awesome. Like, that's an awesome figure. Wow. It's been giant. See, when I go to swap meets for toys, I'm or anywhere for toys, I'm always looking for like not bootlegs, but like the oddball weird lines that like nobody really cares about, like the Cowboys of Moo Mesa, the random like battle trolls, the random like Chuck Norris figures, like stuff where people aren't necessarily like like we talked about before, looking for things I don't know I wanted till I see it. And I go, What is this? And it's funky and it's like mad balls or something, you know. I always like like the weird odd toys. I found some battle trolls the other day. Really? In, in box battle trolls. How much? Nice. I think they're like 40, 50 bucks. No, I was asking how much. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy them? No, seriously. I thought they would go for a lot more. They were like in box. Um... That's awesome. I'll give you low money. <laughs> <laughs> Bad way to start negotiations. <laughs> yeah, man, they don't go for much. <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking for um, Kenner superpowers. Do you know those ones? The old Superman, Batman, the no. early like, I Kenner have ones? I a bag full of them. <laughs> Score. We're just <laughs> <Bring up the, laughs> perfect two dollars a piece. Uh, but whenever I'm digging through toys, and I do love hunting for loose figures, yeah, like yeah. at the at the swap meet. But that was another toy other than He Man that I played with a ton, and I love collecting those guys. Like finding Superman with like the cape on. Yeah, you know which ones I'm talking about. Yeah, right? yeah. The, and I just I very love those ones. That's awesome. Yeah, I like to hear it. All right. Well, was there like a material of like. Vintage toys, comparison to like toys nowadays, like what do you think the biggest difference is with oh boy. The, how they're made? Oh boy. Mikey, my buddy Mikey, if you're listening, plug your ears. <laughs> Just take vintage toys versus Funko Pops. I'm I'm sorry, but a lot I'm not gonna I'm not necessarily calling out Funko Pops, but I feel like a lot of the stuff nowadays, maybe not all. But I, and again, this is, you know, old grandpa talking on my lawn. <laughs> you know, I just play with Tonka trucks and they're real metal and you could kill somebody with a Tonka trunk. Trunk? Tonka, Tonka truck. You know, the die cast stuff. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, and again, it makes sense because it's cheaper, the material and less, but I feel like they've gotten drastically less and less impressive. But then again, there are some very nice lines like the TMNT Turtles in Time ones that look like real. Part, I think those look good. But for the most part, from what I've seen, I'm not the biggest like new and toy stuff like not even like the NECA like type uh, stuff because like yeah, those are pretty those are nice okay, okay. they're really detailed yeah, okay. I don't know about the quality okay. of them. Yeah. I mean I would say the quality has gone down in the majority of them like if you look at like a G1 Transformer I mean mm. the detail that went Gosh. into those things are unbelievable and I have these crazy like Japanese um, some kaitsu Bless robot you. stuff <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> that, like the the amount of dye like molds that went into this yeah. thing are unbelievable but i will say as far as newer figures ones that i do love are, is the marvel legends figures those things are so well built are i they? bought those for years i have like hundreds of them for my son that was his toy 
Nice. And like just the articulation between the toes moving, every limb moving, like they are really well made toys. I've never held one before, but I've never liked the packaging on them. So maybe that's what's kept me away from them. Packaging does suck. Okay. If it was a bubble, I like the bubble. Oh, and it's like it's a box with the clear, and opening them is not good either. Okay. But yeah. the bubble would be much better. So I'm with you on the packaging. Okay. But inside there, like I would buy those for my son brand new and just he would just destroy the packaging right out. He just wanted to get to the figure. <laughs> I don't and, blame him. And you know what? Even at this age, even he's 13 now, he still once in a while will pick those up. That's he's about to go into high school. He'll I still, still pick, <laughs> pick them up and play with them. <laughs> Ricky, your son still gets them and he's yeah, eight, turning 18. Dude, I'll, I'll literally He'll ask him for, for Christmas. I'm like, hey, what do you have for Christmas? Like, well, this sweet Marvel Legends is coming out. Yep. Like, all right, I'll get that for you. He'll like want just random figures. Nice. Mainly Spider-Man, but you know. He's a big Spider-Man guy. Big well, Spider-Man I feel guy. with my son, it's like, um, you know, he's about to go into high school and the, ch- the child within him is dying a little bit. So he doesn't <laughs> play as much. <laughs> no, but every once in a while, I'll hear him pick him up and he'd be in his room and he'd go, that's so And I love hearing like the little last bit of that child still in there. I love how in this room, we're like, dude, that's so cool. That's so sweet. And other like, People like in the world, they like, dude, that that's problematic. <laughs> I can't need to grow up, stop playing with toys. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, I got like one more question under this. Um, where was the store that you got your toys from that you remember like the most? Oh, Ooh. Toys R Us. On what streets were that? That was in Santa Ana. Toys R Us in Santa Ana, man. Bristol, Bristol and Macar. I don't know. And in, in Santa Ana, California. Growing up there, man, it was quite literally my childhood was that store. We would actually the one time in my life where my parents left and left the, my brother on accident without picking him up was at Toys R Us. That Toys R Us, we would go there and we'd sit there and we'd play all the kiosks, you know, like everybody else. We'd play with the kiosk, play with the toys, ride the bikes, and we would read Nintendo Power for just forever. And that's one of the times my mom came home when I wasn't there, and she's like, "Hey, where's Adam?" And I was like, "I don't know." She's like, "Oh my god, I left him at Toys R Us." <laughs> <laughs> and, but but she went back and he's like, "Huh? I was left." Oh yeah, I'm just page forty nine, like still going, you know. <laughs> Toys R Us for me was by far and large my childhood toy store. Have you seen that they're in Macy's now? Yeah, but I, I not don't, the same. It's not the same. same. No, no, no. I noticed that the other day when I was yeah. in there. I was like, wow, there's Toys R Us in here. So Toys R Us started out was was created by Charles P. Lazarus. He started out as a uh, furniture store for kids, and what would happen is he'd build these furniture, and then it'd be good quality. You know, back in the day, they made them good, and people would buy furniture. Never come back. It lasted. Everything lasted. So he made some toys. He started putting toys in his store. And he realized return customers. Oh, little Johnny bought a ball for a dollar. He wants another one. Oh, he lost that attempt to the bed. He wants this toy. He wants this toy. Before you knew it, he started putting out toys. Toys, 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 toys. Then he started making, obviously, Toys R Us. So, you know, important, so prominent that he changed the store to be a toy store. And I don't know, you know, we could say what we want about this or if it's true or what we want to believe. But... Did you know when they announced that it was closing down, that they were shutting toys just, what, three, four, five years ago? Yeah. And they announced the final store was closed down. He died like two days later. No way. Yeah. I, no I way. truly believe, because I believe mental you know, health, mental, mental stability is huge in your life. I think not quite literally physically, but I think it literally kind of killed him. Like took down his mental, you know, it's like people who they lose a child or something and they, or they lose a, someone they've married you for 50 years and then they pass as soon as their partner passes. Yeah. That was his life's work. It was his life, man. But he was no longer the owner though. Correct. He had I probably don't sold. No, I don't know. To be honest, I think he still had, might've had a hand. In he it. might be, you know what? He probably still had a part of it. I'm sure he still had a lot of but stake it's in it. It was his yeah. baby. I mean, Toys R Us, man, that was when that shut down, that was, I think one of the biggest blows. Oh, yeah, yeah. because my understanding of why they actually shut down was they got bought by somebody and then got bought by somebody else and there was like too much debt on it. Mm. It wasn't that they weren't making money. It was like the the process of that had been sold a couple times. There was like too much debt that they couldn't pay the debt service. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like they overpaid for it, basically. Did not know that. Um, but my favorite toy store uh, was KB Toys. Did you guys have KB Toys yeah, around here? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I spent so much time at KB Toys. Yeah. Every video game that I bought, every toy. Uh, there was a mall nearby where we live. I lived in rural Connecticut, and there was a mall, and that was like the only toy store yeah. around. And so we would just live at that place. Oh, Loved KB Toys. It's crazy because I walked into like a, a toy store, or like a toy aisle the other day. It was like at a Best Buy. You know, you can go to any store really. And I was in there with my kid, with my son, and I literally thought to myself, 
this sucks. Like it, every game, I'm not joking, the Best Buy by South Coast Plaza, yeah. the Best Buy is all photocopies, black and white of papers that say, go to the front if you want a game with a picture of it. And there's nothing bright. There's nothing exciting. There's no color. There's no, all the kiosks are like turned off, half working. And I'm like, for them, it might not, they not, might not think this sucks. But for us, we grew up with quite literally the Willy Wonka of toy stores, KB and Toys R Us. You can go on YouTube channels and there's people that upload them. I watch these channels and it's just people in like the 80s and 90s with camcorders. They don't say anything. They're just filming. Toys R Us in 91. Toys R Us during Christmas. And it's like, it's like a literal Willy Wonka toy factory. And it's just like brilliant and beautiful. And when I saw my kid walking around, I'm like, dude, that sucks, man. Like his browsing experience is just so meh compared to what we had. So, yeah, it is unfortunate. I mean, when you're in Target and any of those places, it's just, it's it just, same, it does it? not hit the same There's at no all. Hit. I no. think up until the end, Toy, uh, Toys R Us had still done a really good job yep. with it. Yeah. They had. I, I mean, mean not, and not, not to toot my own horn, but with my stores. I was literally going to say that. Like, when you do come in there, I mean, I spend so much time between, like, the kiosks and all the little things that are in yep. there that are a lot more visual. I think you which, and Retro Rick both are very smart about visual appearance in and, a store. Yeah. And, 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 and you're, you're basically, what you're doing is you're recreating an experience that people don't have. And when someone, like, new comes into the store, it's just like, wow, this is like a toy store, actual one that I can actually enjoy things. You know what I mean? Yeah, and a lot of those kiosks and stuff, which I bought some off of you, and like even the Tails figure and stuff yep. like that. Like I feel, oh, and there was a customer that came in the other day that was asking about the Knights and the Saturn um, big yeah. giant oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> that, that thing's I, beautiful. It, it's beautiful. And he was telling me the story of where that was. He thought that it was in an old electronics boutique they apparently Maybe. had. Maybe, Yeah, but so I was, we were talking about that. He said he knew you, Rick. And um, I was basically saying like when these come back in to the store now i feel like they're coming back home like where they belong that's awesome you know I like so that. i like displaying them Give yeah and, home man i know giving it a home <laughs> how are we such nerds <laughs> 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 when i think about this i'm like wow we're nerds but i love it I mean, well it all our... it ties into those childhood memories totally. yeah I, you know and i think for us probably why we still are the way we are today is because those memories of the toys they're so vibrant kb toys they're so vibrant they had such a big impact it's on crazy us. i think our kids will never say that about looking for video games they'll be like yeah one time i downloaded Fortnite. <laughs> i wonder with them i wonder how I how, what they're what it would what it will be like for them I, right. I i feel like they're ripped off i think mean, they have amazon now and all that so that's all online yeah, yeah. all right well we're going to change that topic up right now. We're going to go into topic three. Ooh, baby. And a lot of people probably don't know this about Riff and Ricky. Uh-oh. How did you guys meet? Let's oh, boy. Like, go ahead. Ricky, why don't you start with who you met first that right. brought you into my life? I mean, you bought, you met me first, right? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> all, but, all but nine months ago. <laughs> well, were you born then? <laughs> <laughs> kidding. All right. Here we go. All right. So uh, I guess it was junior high at our old... What was it? It's it's our old high school. It's it's, it's a school that has like K through twelve. Yeah, yeah. Small whatever. school. Small yeah, small private Christian. Small school. private Christian school. I uh I met uh Aaron's brother Adam, the one <laughs> the one that's he's famous in all our stories. Adam in a lot of videos. Adam's a funny guy. Yeah, love Adam. But uh became good friends with him in uh, junior high and uh, just started hanging out with him and going to Aaron, going to going to uh, his house. Dang, I, I get it confused because I always say Aaron or Adam's house because he's very particular. Yeah, there's a long-standing joke of my brother. He's very like, when you're like, hey, I'm going to Aaron's house. He's like, it's Adam's house. <laughs> and he wasn't joking for a long time. Yeah. So. This is your older brother. My my one that's just one year above me. One yeah. year above Yeah. Me. So, yeah. So, we just started hanging out, playing games, all that good stuff. But that was a thing that I also I also loved surfing so and going, going out and doing that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how... I met A.A. A. Ron. Yep. He called, <laughs> called me A.A. A. Ron. I remember <laughs> seeing my brother come around with Ricky here and there, and I didn't really know him. He's like, what's up? What's up? And I remember when I think our relationship started turning into like a relationship as friends is one time I went over there with Adam and you were playing the Dreamcast. And I was like, oh, I don't remember what game you were playing. It might even have been Final Fantasy something. No, wait. No, it wouldn't have been. That wouldn't have been that. It was uh, Sword, Sword of Berserk. Berserk. Wow. <laughs> sort of the berserk. And we just started talking, making jokes about dumb stuff. That game has a lot of really funny oh, sexual God. innuendos. And we were both like, oh, the guy's name is Balzac. <laughs> like, just like the dumbest, like, little kid jokes. But what really <laughs> happened, what got it kicked off is Ricky was like, hey, I think I'm going to uh, go surf. 
And I was like, dude, I'd love to come. Like I was a sponger. You know, that's what I did all the time. Uh, pretty heavily go to the wedge a lot and drop some big crazy waves and stuff. And Ricky was like, yeah, I longboard. And I was like, sweet. I can pick up longboarding, picked it up super quick. Cause I was a lifelong skateboarder, yeah. but I was like, yeah, I'll go with you. And my brother was like, dude, I don't want to go serving. He's like, he gets motion sick. Yeah. Just on, on he didn't want to get motion sick. Did he sit out there for five minutes? Like, I'm going to vomit, bro. I can't be out here. And I'm like, all right. So <laughs> I started going with Ricky and before you know it, we got very obsessed with going surfing. We were going day in day out. I, to where we started hanging out to, to, it became a joke. My brother's doesn't care anymore, but he's like, do you steal my friend? And I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, and it just kind of worked out that way where I kind of stole his friend, so to say, but we just started hanging out and then I'd start talking to Ricky without Adam. And I was like, you cool with that? He's like, yeah, whatever, dude, it's fine. Like all good. And I, I'd start being like, Hey Ricky, you want to go surf? You want to go surf? We'd go every day. He'd sleep at my house every other night. And then I basically became our, both our moms will call each other yeah. their son. His mom, like, oh, my son, Aaron, come here. And then same with my mom. She's like, oh, is my son coming? And I'm like, yeah, Ricky's on his way. Like, that's just how they treat. It was that much of us hanging out. And we would surf all day and play video games at night or watch Kung Pao. Oh, we watched Kung Pao almost every night. That was, wow, that we overplayed that movie, but we, I still love it. We overplayed it every night. And <laughs> well, I think our relationship started getting stronger and stronger as we, you know, started hanging out every day. And then we ended up working together. We were like, Hey, let's go get, I already had a job at like, I think, uh, sprouts and some other places. But I was like, dude, Ricky, we should apply for in and out together. And we both, we, dude, I didn't even have a car. I showed up with ripped board shorts, a ripped Led Zeppelin t-shirt, like completely unprepared. I don't remember what you were, you were probably dressed better. Your mom probably told you to. No, I, I think, no, I don't even think I was dressed up because it was Josh that let, told us to go. I think you were wearing ripped pants, if I remember. Tight ripped pants. And, <laughs> and right. we got a job in and out together. <laughs> they were tight. <laughs> that, that's what I remember. <laughs> and, and we, we I, didn't really have a car at the time. <laughs> I didn't have a car at time. So it forces to hang out more together because our boss would be like, cool, I'll just put you guys together on the shape shift. Like start time, same end time, same. Yeah. And that's when we just became hung out. It never stopped. I mean, every day of our lives. And then obviously the YouTube side of it. I mean, that's when we just started, you know, watching shows together. You start doing everything together. I'm like, dude, game chasers, retro hunters. Like, dude, we could do this. Yeah. And I just remember being like, we buying a camera we were doing this. And it just obviously from there, us hanging out every day, even into our adulthood. I mean, that's when it was crazy to me is we're, we're married now at this point. We have wives, but I'll be honest, nothing changed. <laughs> Our wives were friends, their friends. Ricky, tell me if I'm right on this. If I am right, I, I feel so embarrassed to even say it. Did I sleep at your house on your wedding night? The, the day after. <laughs> that Wait. Sounds, yo, context, context, guys. Please. I, I, you <laughs> could, no, 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 no. Was that you in my bed? Wait, Ricky, that was you. So the, fir the, fir the first night we stayed at our own place. He was over and he spent the night. That's what it was. Man. First night, dude. At our first place. I just helped him move and I was so comfortable with his wife too. And I was like, all right, guys. And they're like waiting for me to I'm like, guess I'm passing out on the couch. All right, guys. I didn't even ask. I just went and laid down on the couch. So, yeah. All That's right. I got awesome. uh, another question for you guys. Is Can I just like... ask? Oh, no. Yeah, you're yeah. good. Uh, the whole story. Yes. Do you still have the Led Zeppelin shirt? From the 90s. <laughs> yeah, that's what he takes from. I do not. <laughs> do you have the ripped pants? It was it was crucial in us getting a job because the boss looked past that because he was like, oh, "I love Led Zeppelin. Let me show you my tattoos." And quickly he was like talking for two hours, and all of a sudden he's like, "Oh yeah," and you guys got the job. And I was like, "Sweet, like let's go." <laughs> nice. Sounds like straight scene from Step Brothers when they just have both have tuxedos on and pops oh, dude, over. Dude. I still can't believe they trusted us. <laughs> I mean, we were great workers. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. we goofed. We, but they, they, in and out was a place that likes it a little bit if you yeah. contain it because they want that high energy. I mean, yeah. you working in and out, you walk in in a bad mood, they'll look at you and be like, oh, potatoes in the back. That's it. Don't even say a word, stay in the back. Like, we're keeping, we want that vibe out here. Potatoes. And I was all about the vibe. You know? <laughs> what up, customers? Ooh, like an idiot, you know? Awesome. Yo, so, yeah. Just potatoes. Get out of here, dude. We used to, we used to drink, Ricky and I used to drink from the, the shake machine at the end of the night, just oh. like you see in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Suckling down those shakes, bro, at the end of the night. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to go off, but one of my favorite no, stories of all is we had this manager named McKay, and he was giant, bro. He was a big boy, and he was a was Samoan Hawaiian. He was Samoan. Big old Samoan guy. I mean, like, yeah. ooh, huge. Probably like a good five. And one day, Ricky was like, hey, McKay, I eat spread a lot. Is spread fattening? He's like, 
I eat spread, spread every day. Look at me. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, spread, spread will do it. <laughs> so it was cool. I right, going back go. to the question, I was going to say, um, did you guys like uh, having similar upbringings? Did that guy like bring you guys closer together? I guess it would have because, I mean, technically we didn't even know we grew up in like the same area for the longest time. But like we were like the same kind of like we didn't have much growing up. But yep. what we had, we we loved it. I yeah. mean, I, I don't. That, that's the cool thing about like, I don't know, the way we grew up is you cherish every like the little things you get nowadays. Totally. Like, dude, I'm like, I'm like, this is so awesome. You when I see my, for granted. Yeah. When I see my kid like, 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 oh, yeah, whatever. I'm like, dude, you have no idea, no idea what it's like to have like cool stuff. Yeah. It's very bittersweet to like be successful. And I'll say that with humility, being successful financially, because it's bittersweet because you get to provide things for your kids that you wish you could have, you would have had the ability to have when you were a kid. But there's also times like Ricky said, where I'm like, I don't like that you think you should just have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't like that you think you are owed that because whoever has one at school. I struggle with that a lot, actually. I'll be honest. I work very hard to get my kids to the school they're in. It's, it's very expensive. I work my butt off to do it, but they are surrounded by very, very wealthy people. It's in a very specific neighborhood. And again, I work my butt off to do it. So I'm proud of it. Also thankful. Yeah. Thank you, God, providing that. But at the same time, there's days where I'm like, man, and these are good people. There's nothing wrong with them. They're great people. But I'm like, man, I don't want my kids to feel like they are owed that or that their lifestyle has to be the same way because, you know, and it's all relative. I'm sure those kids by those families, no other families that are even more wealthy or more. And I don't never want my kids to kind of, I don't know, get used to the idea that, that life is a handed thing, you know? Yeah. I've but I a, think the, Oh, sorry. You I've had first. a tough time with that with my son too, because with the video game store, like my son is a gamer yeah. and I've just had access to every single video game. Mm. So he's just, you know, as a kid talk about like, we weren't able to have this or this or this, but like with the stores, he grew up in the stores with me. Yep. So literally like anything he ever wanted, he's like, dad, I want that toy. I want this toy. I want that. I'm like, well, yeah. I yeah. mean, once in a while I'd be like, no, no you know, yeah. no, but it was just kind of free access to everything. So was he spoiled a little bit? Yeah. But is he a really good kid and doesn't seem spoiled? Yeah. At the same time he does. So I don't know if it's bad. To you know, spoil that is good. Kids. And I will say you can, you know, you say that about your son and I will say too, with great humility, my son and your son are good kids. Yeah, they're good kids. They're good kids. They're not into bad things. They don't do bad stuff. That's not their vibe. They're, they're not excited by that lifestyle. So that's that's good to hear. That's refreshing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like as uh, parents, because like I'm obviously not in that position, but uh -huh. I feel like as parents, you're really just striving to make sure that they're becoming good people. Yeah. Because the way we grew up, of course, when we get things, we're going to be more appreciative than what we are providing our kids, yeah. right? Because you're in that spot where it's like, I am doing everything I can to make sure that you you are not in the position that I was in. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I think when we talk about this, that's nostalgia and all that, we get that extra ump of appreciation for things. Mm. And we just hope that that shines a little bit more light on who your kids are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Being a parent, man, it's a whole, it's a, it's a wormhole of different emotions every day of figuring out what's the right thing to do, what's being a good dad, what's giving too much, what's giving too little, what's, I don't know, bro. Sometimes I get yeah. mad about the dumbest stuff. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just felt with the toys and the games too. I was like, man, I might as well just spoil you. I love this stuff when I was a kid so yeah. much. I'm like, dude, if you want this thing, you know, not and everything. And if, if he's a good Marvel kid, Legends figures, I'll buy you. He's a good kid Marvel and he Legends works hard, figures. you can earn it. Yeah, yeah and like your best memory is like having the Batman figures. Yep. Like that's so impressionable on you. Where was it spoiling you? Maybe. Totally. But was. so what? It was a good memory. Yep. So yeah, I always tell my kids because they'll be like, can you buy me this? And I always say. Yes, I could. And they go, well, you get it for me? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> Why not? I mean, that's good, too. Got it yeah, for and sure. And I say with a smile, them. and they know. They know yes. that's like my yeah. thing. Yes, I can. And, and it's funny because Riff will be like, well, what do you got? You going to earn it? What oh, you totally. Do? He's seen me. I'm, I'm literally like, yeah. Oh, you want five bucks? That sounds cool. Yeah, go wash my car real quick. Yeah. Like, oh, and okay, I'm like, shoot, I better do it. I'm in the background. Yes, dad, I'll clean it. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Ranking Nintendo consoles. Yeah, Let's go. All right, boys. So I was going to have Virtual Boy queued up, but I feel like that's too easy of a target. That's too easy of a target. We're going to go straight to Game Boy Advance and pull a little Ooh. audible. Throw a Game Boy Advance in there. Boys, thoughts. Game Boy Advance. Oh, uh, and so I can only rub my fingers for so long. Guys. <laughs> Give me something. Overall ranking. Just yep. overall, overall ranking. best. Well, let me say Hurt for those who don't know, 
S is best, F is worst. I had to ask that last time, actually. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you're so, dumb. S for sub- <laughs> 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 All right, what you got? S, well, S used to be satisfactory if you were in middle school. My kids school. still have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I was like, wait a second. That's a partition uh, pl- 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 grade. <laughs> I'll say it. It's a C for me. C? I, I, love the, I love the games, but that console in particular was not backlit. Yep. Yep. Mm. No so if you would have put the SP on there, I would have been like, all right, that's a solid B. That's a good call. I wasn't thinking that. Christopher? I'm, first of all, not a huge handheld guy. Okay. Never was. Um, so these are always going to be lower ranking for me. As far as the games, I mean, the game library is amazing. It's great. And they're pretty much like Super Nintendo games. Yes. Yeah. Portable Super. And there's so many games that came out on it that didn't really come out on the Super Nintendo. Okay. Um, but again, I did not play this a ton. Not a handheld guy. Yeah. I would give it a C. Well, I'm surprised for all the praise you just gave it. You're like, it was like a million games, probably the best ever. A C. (laughs) I think uh, for me it would be B just because it was more of like my console growing up. It wasn't that one specifically. It was definitely the Game Boy Color. But, you know, I still hold that in pretty regard. I had that same one, you know. I was on A for it. So we got one A, one B, two Cs. I think that puts it like low B. Yeah. People, people got mad at us for like putting things in between. Hey, whoever you were, Beto, make sure I'm nice and zoomed in. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> we like the halves, all right? We're going, we're going, we said between B and C. Yeah. All right, boys. He just, makes it, he just makes it a wider picture. Shut up, bro. Here we go. Now we're going to actually, actually put this bad boy on the line. The virtual boy, as you have it, sitting beautifully behind you in the box. It is gorgeous. Um, I'll jump in on this one first. A virtual boy, great idea. Hor- it's cool, right? We like the weird. We like the cool. So I could make the case that I, to be honest, if you gave me the choice, do you want to collect a virtual boy or Super Nintendo? I'd probably pick virtual boy, even though I like Super Nintendo better because it's so oddball. But as far as the console itself, I have like two memories with it. They're not good memories, which I'm not going to repeat in this place. But um, <laughs> I, it's it's low for me. It, it's it's a it's a C. I like the Wario game. I can't remember what it is, but I like the Wario game. I would put it at C. I love the design of it. I love that Nintendo kind of went outside of the box with this one yeah. to kind of like, it was probably one of the first virtual reality yeah. concepts. Yep. Um, I just like that Nintendo has always tried this kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I've only played a handful of games. I think I've played the the Mario one, yeah. and then this top down Mario really Clash. expensive one. It's uh, Jack Bros. Jack Bros. Yeah. Thank you. I play J- Jack Bros. Is actually a really good game. It is, you, but it's hard to play it. For an, I haven't played it. It's hard to play anything though for an extended period of time on that. Yes. So you have you you've, have you played it though? Either of you guys? Oh yeah. Yeah. Where you're looking down on it yeah. and you're falling into the. The, the layers are below it, and you have to try to fall into a layer below it. It's a really cool yeah. concept game. Great concept. Um, What's your rating? <laughs> my rating is <laughs> uh, I know everybody hates on this one. I'm going to give it a C for Kay. effort. CC? It's going to be a C, because I can only play it so long before I get a headache. And I, I, I actually really enjoyed the, t- the tennis game on there. Oh, yeah, Mario Tennis. It was really I, I great. I bad for any console that rates below this. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, you made it below a Virtual Boy? What do you say? Oh, I didn't. I never played it. So, so. we got, we're, so, hey, look, ladies and gentlemen, a C, solid, solid C. Solid C. I a like solid that. C. All right, boys. Uh, Ricky, you throw out the next console, my friend. All right. Uh, let's go GameCube. GameCube. Oh. Right here. Game oh, yeah. Um oh, yeah. How about let's, uh, let's throw it to Curtis first? That's an S tier for me. <laughs> I'm going to say that just because it was just, I think at the time, like one of the most powerful. Uh, consoles what's your out. game easily super smash bros mm. um also kurt kirby air ride oh kurt i like i said i called it kurt kirby air ride. <laughs> That's what I don't put your name in this hey bro i try to shape myself after kirby you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> bro you have to take the jabs All right. come on <laughs> jab yourself <laughs> um go ahead chris a for me a. love it great Great console. Love the graphics on yeah. it. It's smaller library. Wish it had a bigger library. Yeah. But some of the games on there, Resident Evil Remake, that's what I thought you were referring to before, not Resident yep. Evil 4, but Resident, Resident Evil 4. Remake of Resident Evil 1 on this console. Beautiful. On beautiful game. So A for me. A? I'm going to put it on S tier as well. Okay. You know, yes. I still remember going to your house when your brother got it, and I could, it blew my mind that it knew. Like when you're playing the game... It knew that it was nighttime or daytime, and it that, was that always that? scared me as a kid. I'm like, this is the mark of the beast. <laughs> and I honestly love, <laughs> I love the controller design but, too. Of it. Oh, great controller! Great controller. Most people argue greatest controller of all time. I yes. love the controller. It's great. Um, I go. Ah, I, I'm not. I, I have very good memories with a v- small amount of games on it. 
Um, I would probably go solid B. So yours Ooh. was S, S for sure. A A S. S. B, that's A? It's a. a. That's solid A. Solid, solid a. a. Wow. All right, Curtis, you pick the next console, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, Wii. Wii, straight oh. up Wii. Okay. Um, how about, I'll jump in first on this one. If I can grab my Wii. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right. All right. Uh, Wii. I, I might be throwing a curveball to some people. I absolutely think the Wii is an A console. I think it was one of the most underrated consoles. If you... Look at Hidden Gem stuff. I mean, there's just endless lists of great, fun Wii games. Yeah, the Waggle, Waggle Control kind of scared people away in the beginning. But I feel like it wasn't utilized on most of the games as much that I played anyway. I had so much fun on the Wii. And it's a great console to mod, by the way. But yeah, I <laughs> love the Wii very much. A for me. A. Yep. Wow. Solid A. Above the GameCube for me. Wow. That's terrible. Uh, am I next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, this is either an F or an E for <laughs> wow. I, 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 there, There's one other one that probably is lo, as low as this, which you guys are not going to love. I already know that like, Chris started thinking first the off, value, I think value. The shovelware on this is just like I, sickening to I, me. I, I the amount of garbage games that came out for this. There is like <laughs> more garbage titles that I look at that I see all the time. I'm like, why would anybody want to play this? The only game I've ever really enjoyed on this is I like the, the Wii Sports baseball and bowling and that's it you like the packing game straight up that we sports yeah that's wow. it wow that's okay. really the only game i've ever I, like really I said, enjoyed on, it. on this podcast it's okay to be wrong ricky <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, hold on i gotta give my final number i yeah, said e or number? I i'm gonna give it i'll give it an e just because back to oh the my. wow back to like them being innovative i do like yeah. the motion controls it was yeah so e for me e holy <laughs> ricky oh dude i loved it a for sure what? oh man A smart another smart man in this <laughs> room there we off. go i would say b the only reason is because the only thing that i had a connection to was i was able to actually play it with my parents oh that's awesome you know what i mean yes. like that was like the one yeah console not many like, consoles could do that i love that my e is gonna drag your sky score way down i know where does, <laughs> so where does that put us b a a e that probably puts us at like a c like in between it's gotta be a c Oh, hey, I, I'm not, <laughs> just kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, watching this, I'm not a fan of doing this. Okay, I am not. I don't feel good doing this right now. I don't. I don't agree with. Unless this. you don't do average and you do more median, value, or like you take an outlier <laughs> out. It was cool having you on the podcast, man. <laughs> Ricky, what's your next console? <laughs> All right, let's go with N64. N64. <laughs> Let me grab that boy right there. All right, Ricky, since you called it, why don't you? Give us your, your tier. Oh, bro, this one for me is an S tier. Wow. I loved it. Star Fox 64. <laughs> That's a good call. So good. I played that game mm. way mm. too many times. Mm -mm -mm. That Mario Kart, the Bias. first Smash Bros, mm. me and this dude and his brothers used to get on there and decide who was the best on that. And that made me, dude. Who was your main? Times. Cur what? Who was your main? Kirby? Kirby. That's the man. Kirby Smash. That's the man, dude. Yeah, uh, uh, Ricky, I'll jump in with you because y you referenced me. Yeah, man. It's funny when you first when I first said N64, my brain didn't go that high. And then when you said st I think Star Fox is an S tier game. 64. Oh so good. I think Star Fox 64 is one of the greatest games we've had yes. in the Nintendo universe. Um Mario 64 was life-changing. Quite literally life-changing so for me. Um Pilot Wing 64. That was pretty good. Cruising. San Francisco I mean, Rush, yeah, hey. You're missing hey. the best oh, dude. one. Hey, go for it. Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is, yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, that's just the easiest. I'm not just wearing like like biased. And, and many Zelda people shirt, in a but, lot of lists that appears as the best game of all time. And it, it, it for good reason. Yeah. I mean, that's an S tier. Here comes Mr. I mean, Downer. You guys are so wrong. <laughs> what is, yeah, what is it? Come on. I'm going to give this a solid I almost want to go whoa, F on this. Whoa, this whoa. is my least whoa, favorite whoa, N64 what? console. <laughs> I almost want to go F. But I and, and Ocarina of Time is my least favorite Zelda game oh, of all fine. of the Zelda games. I know, but I know people love this <laughs> console so much. It is like the most admired console. And I have tried. I've tried to play games. I've played wow. Ocarina of Time. And the graphics to me are so clunky. I don't like the, the way control. they look at all. And I know for a lot of people, I think this was their childhood memories, which is why they for all of us it's our childhood memories but yeah. it was like their first console and i think that that's why like for a curtis it's probably your first console yeah, right yeah there's I, a so connection to it you sure. guys it was Dude. not your first I don't console. Think I'm yeah we were in high school playing yeah. smash bros tournaments not being cool while the rest of the world was being football jocks and we're like video games it wasn't, reminder video games wasn't cool 
at that time. So I was a PlayStation guy. So PlayStation oh, was that out. Explains. So I was oh, playing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was playing PlayStation, yeah. which I believe was out exactly at the same time as this. They were the competing ones, not PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, 2, how right? much better are the graphics? <laughs> my, not my, that much better. My but, buddy used to say this. He'd say N64 is for people who has friends. PlayStation's for people who don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I mean, I brought, was maybe I did. Controller ports. Savage. There was a lot of time at home playing at that PlayStation by myself, yeah. but I did love the PlayStation. So I never yeah, yeah, yeah. really adopted this one. I've tried okay. to go back and play some yeah. of the games. It is other. I mean, other than the Wii, probably my second least. Hey, bro, favorite. it can only take so much bashing, bro. Just give us a letter. <laughs> Jeez, you don't have to kick it while it's down. <laughs> <laughs> e. I'm gonna give it an E. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't wait to drag. S it's me. Curtis's most love. Look, I'm telling you right now, this is biased right here. So no, S A A middle. So I get, I, put a, I get it. I got S. So it's S S A. S is S S A S? Oh, an E, idiot over here. <laughs> What's that put it to? B? B? Yeah, probably a B. Stupid idiot. Guy, Chris is ruining our entire life. Oh, he's the outlier right now. Oh, man. I get to drag him all Chris down. I think Chris did awesome. Did you play games by yourself? Like, did you like a the lot. N64 yeah. back there? Our sound engineer? Gamer. Thumbs up or thumbs brother. down? With my brother, too. Okay. Oh, our sound engineer just gave it a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Yes. I. By the way, I know there are other people <laughs> out there that agree with me on the N64. I love Please. It. I was going to give Beto's podcast place a shout out, but never mind. He said down. <laughs> Beto said down on it. Let's I, go. I'm going to vote. Uh, go for the next one. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Wii U. Ooh. So I guess since I pulled it, I'll do it. Um, I like the Wii U. I wouldn't say I love the Wii U, but I did have a very special time. Super Mario Odyssey was probably the game my kid played that, that had the most shape for me as my kids as far as like getting into games. But the Wii U is the first console I got to watch them enjoy, so to say. And I feel like it got them into liking specific aspects of video games. And my kids aren't gamers by any means, but I feel like the Wii U, without calling them gamers, they would constantly always want to have fun with it, right? They wouldn't be like, I'm a gamer, I want to play games. They'd be like, hey, we want to have fun. It's almost like it was a toy. So for the Wii U, for my attachment to it with like my kids and the way they kind of played it, special place, I had lots of fun with Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land with so me and Ricky. Uh, Nintendo Land, yeah. That was our game, man. Nintendo so Land good. was great. Um, I'm gonna give it a, 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 a B minus. Am I next? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. I I actually really like the Wii U. I love the graphics. I love the game pad on it. Um, I played Breath of the Wild yeah. on this for the first time. Wow. I played Hyrule Warriors was an awesome Fun game yeah. for this. Um, I thought the graphics were amazing. Uh, I would give this a B. Okay. I like the Wii U. Riquito? I'll do an A on it. Nice. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it way too much, and for the same reason him. I I, I love playing the you know the Metroid game on yes. Nintendo Land. On so Nintendo I played Land. that with the kids, and then the the Zelda one. That's my favorite oh one. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. The Good Zelda time. one is very fun. One person very plays fun. the swordsman, the other plays the archer, and it's yeah. really Which fun. Zelda is it? uh, it's in it's in within it's Nintendo in, Land. Oh, within yeah. Nintendo Land. It's a okay. mini game within gotcha. those mini games. Those are mini great. games are awesome. It's an F for me. F. Wow. It was not good Ricky, for me. What's up with white people, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it just wasn't fun. I mean, for, for me, it's right. back there. You like that one? <laughs> um, okay, so F. I was a B. B minus B A, a. but his probably puts it to a C minus ish. Yeah, that's where it deserves. Wow, wow. Now you know how it feels, Chris. I know. To have a console you love to shot down. <laughs> what do we say that was like a B minus, or what do we say? Uh, that puts it at a, C. at a C. Stupid Curtis. <laughs> All right, Ricky. Next console. All right, let's go. Let's let's go. Game Game Boy. Game Boy. Uh, Chris, I love the Game Boy. I mean, the graphics are elementary, but so much nostalgia with this. I'm gonna give it uh, A. Okay. First handheld. Loved it. Yeah. Perfect a for me. A lot of nostalgia. Uh, great. Uh, what was that? Mario Land was. Awesome. awesome Tetris on there. Awesome. So, I mean, those were the ones I mainly played on there. I loved it, but at the same time, it also hurt my eyes like the Virtual Boy. Uh, so, for me, it's B minus. Okay. But I love it. It's an A for me because it was like a crossover when you wow. can play Pokemon with N64. Like you do the stadium mm. and then also get your, your <gasps> items here and there. So, I loved it. That's Game Boy Color. Dang it, you did not grow up with it either, I didn't do Curtis. DMG 001, but I'm saying like that, if I'm going to say the you stylistic of it. Yes. You just unlocked, I was going to put this at a C until you said that, because the Super Game Boy technically plays part into that. And I used to play Link's Awakening, one of my favorite stories of all time, 
hooking up the Super Game Boy in a tent in my backyard, falling asleep, paying Leaks Awakening with my brothers all through the night, waking up the next morning, game was still on, we played it. That's like one of my fondest video game, like emotional, like I've almost like cried talking to my brother about the story because I'm like, dude, I feel like that was a night where we're like, that was young days, you know, retro, retro, where we're like really bonded over video games. And there, that's happened since on other consoles as well, like Silent Hill, like we bonded over that, but like that was a really big bonding moment. So I'm glad you brought up like different ways to play it. Because of that, I'm going to put it at an A because nice. it holds one of my strongest memories. A, A, A. B, B. A, 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 B. Wow. B, A minus. It, it I think that makes it an console. A minus. So it's, so right now the game keeps just beating it slightly. Yeah. Okay. So A minus. We're just going to drop right there. Um, I'll snag the next one. We'll just stay on the Game Boy uh, topic. And, or Game Boy, but basically, there's a million different versions of DSs. There's a 3DS, XL, 3DS, new, new 3D. Basically, the DS, 3DS world. I didn't want to yeah, bring yeah. out a million different consoles and make this list last 10 For years. Why don't you start? Uh, don't hate me, JRPG life. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to say C. Okay. Just because it's just not my type of console. Okay. I didn't like it. I mean, I'll just j jump right on your back. I'm with you. Yeah. Wasn't my thing. I didn't. I didn't really like any of the DSs, the 3DSs. I get it. Just wasn't. Wasn't for me. Again, not saying it was bad. Just wasn't my jam. Not my jam either. Wow. My son plays it, but I don't hate on it. I like the library. I like I, the I didn't 3D. Say, by the way, I'm going C. Did you? Oh, you're going C. I didn't, I didn't think I said so. C. Okay. Um, I'm probably at a C as well because I don't hate it. Okay. C. C for me. Yeah. Same here. I, I wasn't really into it. Wow. That was more my kid that was into that. Yeah, my son. I was like, I. Ah. I don't know. And what'd you say? I said C. C? So yeah. we're C. Oh, C. Wow. C. Yeah. The first one we agree wow. on. Wow. Uh, Agreeance across the board, just on, on a mediocre. It's just mid. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <sighs> Boy, the Nintendo. Ooh, the NES. Yeah. Solid F. Now we're kidding. getting into the good ones. <laughs> Chris, you can go first. You're the, young, the youngest. Uh, I've idiot. only played don't it maybe you... a handful of times, but I've more emulated the games. The games on itself, I think it has the best artwork and mm. the 8-bit playability. I, I actually like the simplicity of it. So. Oh, yeah. I would say for me, it's at a B. Got it. Okay. Um, I'll jump in and say S, man. I think the Nintendo is not only the most important piece of video games we have after the video game crash from 1983 and, you know, the Ataris and Click on all that, not only just for resurrecting, becoming the Lazarus of video games, so to say, just some of my absolute fondest, most favorite, I could count you, I could name 50 games off the back of my hand without stopping that I like because it's that important to me in my childhood. And I feel like why I'm good. Again, when I talk about video games, we talked about in a previous podcast, I'm good at side scrollers. I'm good at platformers, like ridiculously good. And I'll admit it. It's because of the Nintendo. So for sure an S for me. Nice. I for me this is no nice because I was nice, man. <laughs> I was thinking about no, how, how much I, I love it as well. <laughs> did, I, did I like that nice or did I not? Like no, that? I, I'm saying nice because I'm thinking. I'm in my head. I'm just to trying to decide if I want to put this as a, as an S where I think it belongs. But there's another console which I think is superior to it. So like, can you put it in superior if there's something better? Well, you can to always it? we can always pull what we do with my retro life and shoot it above superior. So. <laughs> I almost well. This to me is an S or an A. Okay. I would probably put it in between for the same reasons you said. I heard Ricky's family say a lot. They go, S A. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis didn't get that. He's too white. <laughs> hey, that don't got it. That's for sure. Hey, um, I lean the elbow side to side. You know, my first console, <laughs> nine, I, 1985, yeah. five years old, got this. It was revolutionary. Played yeah. my favorite games Metroid, Zeldas, all of that. Yeah. Um, I, I'll put it out as an S, actually. Okay. I want to put it up in the S okay. category. S. Oh. S for sure. Just that's my childhood. Yeah, that's literally what I had. What's your favorite game on the NES? <sighs> this is really hard. This is actually really hard. But I'm gonna go with Mike Tyson's Punch Out. It's a great that's game. That's a great game. Great soundtrack. It's Not my favorite, but, but a good one. I, uh, so you said I said B, and we all said S. So S. I think that locks it in, even like an A plus. A plus. A plus. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Dara would say these last three consoles, like NES, SNES, and Switch, are all very high, highly regarded. Um, consoles right there. Okay, uh, let's go switch. Let's go. Um, Ricky, go for it. I actually really like the switch. Um, but for like, I don't play it as much anymore. So to me, it's more like a in between a B and a C. I love I, my kids love. So it console. died out for it, you a little bit. The it died out light. for me a little bit. Yeah, I will say that the switch had one of the greatest, in my opinion, one of the greatest like starts. 
it, to a console. It did. Like when this thing came, I mean, dude, when is the last time at an event where Game of the Year was two Nintendo games? That's where it was in competition between Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. I would dare say those are two of the greatest games ever in the existence of video games. And they came out when the Switch launched and it had that initial boom of like like five games or so. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Well, I'm going to put it at a high ranking because I was never a handheld guy necessarily. Like talking about Game Boy, I played it on the Super Game Boy, kind of ranked the 3DS low. But when it came to the Switch, I didn't realize that how much I loved portability. And if it weren't for the portability, I wouldn't have beat Mario Odyssey. That's where I put my time on it, portable. And I was out traveling and doing things and on flights. And I still like the Switch a lot. I'm going to put it at an a, a solid A. I better. I have nice. a switch tattoo right here. So, right there. So, what you got, Chris? Don't don't say nice, please. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm I I love this console. Actually, I don't play it as much just because I play a lot of Xbox and PS5 and stuff okay. like that too. But as far as like the games that are on it, I mean, the Breath of the Wild on this console as well, That's and they scary. have the new Breath of the Wild coming out. Um, some of the other games, the library, I'm just amazed at the library. Unreal. That with them, everybody saying games are going all online and this and that. And like I, at the stores, I just continue to see crazy amount of physical copies of like awesome games. For oh this. yeah. It's one of the top selling consoles, uh, at least in store yep. that get people want to oh, play. Yeah. Um, as far as games and, uh, of the stuff I played and my son loves it, I would give it a solid A. A. Yeah. Wow. A A C ish. Let's just go B because you guys literally got me thinking about Breath of the Wild. I forgot how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> and I'm not gonna skew this just because I don't own a Switch, but I've okay. played it. Okay. But, you know. Okay, so you don't skew. So A A B B plus? A minus B plus. I'd say A minus. A minus. Okay, A minus. And I I think I think all of us are going to have the same sentence. I'm going to let Curtis go because I don't let, know his thoughts. On sure, Curtis go, yeah, let Curtis go first. Because yeah. I don't know. I already, I can guarantee we all have the same thoughts on this. Yeah, Curtis, Curtis goes first. I don't know yours. Not saying it's good or bad. I just don't know what your thoughts on the Super Definitely Nintendo. Definitely going to be below the NES, so. And I should, by the way, clarify for audio listeners, Super Nintendo. Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to go with uh, Bussy. You know what I mean? Because okay. below uh, NES, but, you know, just kind of like where I want to rank it. For have me. you played it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. I will stand firm as I show the viewers my Super Nintendo controller tattoo. Uh, nice. Greatest console of all time, hands down, peak of gaming, never gotten close to getting better than the Super Nintendo. Agreed. Yes. In my opinion. <laughs> nice. Yep. And I'll say plenty of great consoles, but as you can see, but I I've never experienced better in my life. We I, are... I think the only reason... I oh, sorry. I didn't mean no, no, you it. go. Chris. I think the only thing I just... It's because I didn't really feel that connection to it. I loved how the artwork in the NES was so before its time. 8-bit style? Yeah. And it's just like that stylistic of like display. It looked awesome. Don't down talk my Super Nintendo. Yeah, well, <laughs> face that way. <laughs> <laughs> For me, lo absolutely love this system. Mm -hmm. um, it's clearly in the S, if not ab above. I'm with you. I mean, if, and for what you said, like the Nintendo when it came out was mind-blowingly above the Atari and then when this came out, I at that time I remember thinking like it can't get any better. Than Donkey this. Kong Country, was we talking oh, about yeah, before. Donkey Kong Country, so the uh, pre-rendered link, graphics, Link to the Past, is greatest, just greatest, Zelda. greatest Zelda game of all time. Same, yeah. Let's well, go. Except oh, for the oh, original the, Nintendo not the, one. Not the, the original oh, Nintendo same. always Zelda just is, light high five. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Right. it's a better <laughs> game, Link to the Past. But the original Zelda has that nostalgia factor. Definitely not the greatest. But Ricky, go ahead. This is the so this was the Super Saiyan of all the consoles for sure. Ooh, I like that. Nice. For sure, because we never got a library like that. Super Metroid. Oh my gosh, so good. Super you had Metroid. Street Fighter, like an actual console. I mean, you had all the RPGs. Mortal, RPGs. Mortal Kombat came Mario out Mario RPG? We still haven't seen a, a, a follow-up. Technically, Paper Mario was, but it doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. Super, Super Nintendo has an, a vast library. It's one of the vast. few consoles where yeah. you could show me, go on Google Images and type up good SNES game, and you're going to be like, oh, Earthbound, oh, this RPG, oh, this, oh, this fighting game, oh, this classic game, oh, Illusion, I got all, just the numbers. Oh, and Super Nintendo, I have to say it, the music, man. Ooh. Mm. Dear, I, I've heard an argument recently saying aquatic ambience on Donkey Kong Country is the greatest composed music. That is it's a great really good. song. It is. It is. It is. Chrono Trigger had some amazing music to it as well. You know, it's fun. The next podcast we're doing is a video game music challenge to Ooh, put our nice. knowledge to the test. So, yeah, I, I'm saying S plus. And you yeah. guys can take me out of the ring because my opinion doesn't matter. But no, it does. Do. No, but y'all's do. Yeah, it matters, man. <laughs> no, it's everybody matters. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> but honestly, it's a great, it's a good, it's a good so console. So you said B ish? Yeah. Okay, so, and we all said S's. S. S. I'm sorry, Chris, no matter what, I'm putting it at S. I, yep. I can't, I don't think my, my arm will explode if I physically try <laughs> to drop right, this. As the viewers see it, Riff <laughs> is putting in the F uh, section. Wait, yeah. Wait, uh, up there, you can barely see it. It's so high. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So, top of the list, Super Nintendo. Okay, guys, we just have to see real quick which one's the worst. I think Virtual Boy. It has it's to be Virtual Boy. It's probably Gotta Virtual Boy. Or I'm going to yeah. get hate 3DS. Oh, God, no. <laughs> How far down did I drag N64? B? <laughs> nice. Hey, we also have the Wii at, at the lowest because of you dinguses. <laughs> so. I don't know. The Wii U yes. could go all the way to the bottom for, oh, oh, no. for failure. I can't, I can't believe you guys are so hot on the Wii. Yeah, that is up, crazy. To me. I understand Honestly, the N64, but Wii? It's the Wii bowling for me. <laughs> I, I can. It's Wii bowling. I mean, like, you literally just, just Wii, say, just bowling. Wii, Wii bowling and then the boxing. You that know what I noticed? Chris's games are all the all the stuff he likes is the single player stuff. No friends, Chris. No, no, no friends, mortal, Chris. mortal Kombat. I'm a Mortal Kombat guy too. Oh, that's yeah, single player. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, on to the next. All right, we're gonna go no on friends. to our next thing, which is friend. Nintendo we Music. Together, right? Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Curtis, you're gonna control this. So this is a. I don't know if it's Nintendo Music. I'm know. not sure. Oh, okay. So this was made for me about when Ricky was when we were supposed to do a panel at SoCal, like. Maybe two, three years ago. Two years ago, yeah. We had this made for us, and we didn't end up using it. What it is, it's a compilation. We do this sometimes at our panels. A compilation of video game music. I didn't watch it yet. Um, I didn't get to listen to it yet. It's going to play music, uh, from my understanding, for like 10 seconds. And we're going to then guess... Say your name if you think you know what it is. Don't yell the name because it's going to get – yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, say your name instead of what you saw, what video game you think it's from because if we all say it at the same time, it's going to get jumbled or you're going to – if I accidentally say Mega Man and you thought it was something else, you're going to be like, oh, I said it first. Yeah, it was Mega Man. You know what I mean? So as soon as you hear the music and you think you know what it is, say your name. Curtis will pause it. Then you answer. Okay. We feeling good? But boys, for this one, we got to put on the headphones. Bum, bada, 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 bada. And this is a fair warning. To everybody, I have been editing for a long time and using video game music for 11 years. I am normally very good at these. I don't know. He could have put a ton of PlayStation games and I'm screwed or Sega games. I don't know. As soon as you know it, say your name and Curtis. You can use a space bar, Curtis, if it helps oh, you make sweet. it easier. Yeah, yeah. Here, wait, are, we, are we keeping score? I'm just afraid to move it. Uh, we can keep score. It's like a competition. Just in your head, <laughs> keep score. Okay. I'm and terrible. We'll, we'll, you know. All righty. We are starting and commencing. Here we go. Riff. Blades of Steel. <laughs> Press play. No way. Yeah, it was. <laughs> what? Here we go. Here comes the answer. Blades oh of Steel. My gosh. What happens when you get it wrong? You, just you lose a point. You lose a point. If you Ooh, say your name Jeopardy. and get it wrong, you lose a point. I okay. Like it. Okay. So you're up one. I don't know if I'm going to get any of them. I might be in the negatives after yeah. this. Holy <laughs> moly. That was so quick. That was like two seconds. I, I, like I said, I am literally I not saying know. this to brag. I, I, For a living, I, for editing, I grab music all day for people. So I hear music for 11 years straight. Wow. Well, I might suck, though. For, I mean. All right. We're going to number two. Riff. Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Stop what it. Did you NES. Say words? Chip and Dale's no Rescue way. Rangers. He's NES. really good at it. No He's really good. At it. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's keep it rolling. All righty. Here we go. Riff. No, I Mega Man I'm, 3. I'm, I'm, in sh I'm in shock. No way. Mega Man 3. I know it for sure. Ready? Let's keep going, boys. Riff. Oh, <laughs> Mario 64 slider. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. Super Mario RPG. Dang it. It is. Come on, Ricky. <laughs> Daddy's feeling good. Can we get can we get one of these to try and guess the next one? No. <laughs> do they do that in Jeopardy? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolute powerhouse. Rip. Balloon fight. Yeah. 
Oh my I remember, gosh. I put that one in the song too. Oh, you yeah? did? Yeah. Alright, uh, a little short. We do have known. RPG, my RPG, I knew. You would have known that. Ready? Oh, Ricky. Ricky. Um, Let's go, Ricky. 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 Mario Kart 64. Nice. He got it. That's it. Hey. Yeah. That was technically you, I think. No, no, no. <laughs> Goof Troop. Dang. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Go ahead. I got him first, but I know I can get it. So, Ricky, I'll give it to you. F Zero. Super Nintendo. Nice, Ricky. <laughs> Ten, nice, to, Ricky. 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> to zero. I have zero. PlayStation Pro. Good one. Ricky! Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, that was an easy one. What level? No, I don't know. Green, Emerald, Emerald Hill. I think it is Emerald Hill. Nice! Wow. Ricky! Shot, Ricky. Rick. I think it's Rocket Knight Adventures. Is that or Sparks? Or I'm gonna say Rocket Knight. Anybody else's opinions? <laughs> Dang, got him. Dang, Daddy feels good. Oh, rip, 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 rip. I got it. Mappy Land. It is. Yeah, you got it. <sighs> Dang. Just how he just knows. <laughs> I know what he has, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Rip! Oh. Turtles in time, baby. Yep. <laughs> feeling good, feeling good. Rip! Not Super Mario World, Super Mario All Stars. I'm 99% sure. Yeah, well, if you get this wrong, I'm going back to zero. <laughs> I'll take the bet. I'll take the bet. Ready? Wow. Dang. Oh, rip. Super Double Dragon. <laughs> that one I knew. I should have. Too quick. Dang, <laughs> <laughs> Super Double Dragon, too. Sunset Riders, baby. Dang. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. Oh shoot. I know it. Riff. <laughs> Star Tropics on the NES. Comments? That's pretty good too. I don't remember talking Star Tropics that much, so. I'll take his word for it. I don't even know. It is. Okay. That was a... I, so that one, I guessed, not because I knew it, but off the tone of the game. A lot of times I'll do that. Like if I hear a song and I'm like, that sounds like it's in this game. I don't recognize that tune, but it sounded like one of the other songs that I use in Star Tropics. Mm. I'm just glad I'm not versing you at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Riff. You know why I pointed to you? I'm so surprised you didn't get that. What? Star Fox. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's Star Fox. And I think it's Star Fox 64. Listen. My gosh. Hey. I feel really happy right now, boys. <laughs> He's giddy. Riff. Skater die. <laughs> Skater die. Yo, this is like a, a, a video segment for, for Riff to just to be an absolute beast. <laughs> Even if I was listening to these for 30 seconds, I would have no clue. <laughs> I think you would speculate on it. Oh my gosh. Is, oh, I know. Oh, wait, great Chris. Rygar. That one I know. Dang. That one I know. Yeah, point goes to Chris. I needed to get one. <laughs> that one I knew. Did you know that one? Probably. Riff. Oh. 
Mario Paint. Watching my brother roll me over. <laughs> <laughs> Riff. Oh. oh cr- Dracula X. Oh, well, I was going to say Demon's Crest. Oh, okay. You can call that. No, Ricky? you're probably right. I was going to say uh, du- uh, just the regular, uh, God, I can't, Castlevania, Super Castlevania. Okay. Well, all right. Well, let's, let's, let's grant that. Super Castlevania, Demon's, Demon's Crest, Dracula X. It's, it's, Cas- it's one of the Castlevania. Dracula X. <laughs> Riff. Oh. You should know this. Oh, I know. Yes, Chris. Zelda 2. It's Zelda 2. Yeah. Thank you. Just need a second longer. Do you know that one? Right? You know that. I put that one on the short, too. Mm-hmm. Learning them. Riff! <laughs> Wizards and Warriors. I think. 90% sure. So you tell me there's a chance. <laughs> Ricky, I think Ooh. it's is it Super Dodgeball? I mean, no. the dang. it's not Super Dodgeball, but my brain doesn't know what it is about it yet. Oh, I know what you meant to say. Oh. I know it. I know it. Can but, I say it? Yeah, go ahead. Super Spike V Ball. Ah, oh. yeah. Go ahead. Dang, you were close, Ricky. There was a ball in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh. Ooh, go ahead. Now I'm questioning it. Oh shoot! It's one. It's either two. Did one it, of two games. Did, I already did, know. Did Super dodgeball. I'm gonna go River City Ransom. Just like one they're of the back. Tec- they're both techno yeah, Japan. That's why I'm like, oh, I, I, Super th- dodgeball. I'm pretty sure it's Super dodgeball though. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. I'll let Ricky answer it. I know it is. Mega Man X. Yes, it is. <laughs> is it X? <laughs> oh, I was going to say it too. Mega Man X. So good. Man. Ooh, Ooh, Chris. Ooh. Zeldita, baby. Mario? Yes. <laughs> Part seven. <laughs> Run it out, Curtis. Oh, listen. Everybody just listen. Best. Riff. Oh. Legacy, Legacy of Wizard, okay. Rotorbund, NES. I, I was going to say it's Journey to Silius. Wow. It kind of sounds yeah, like it to me. Yeah, it sounds like something else. Legacy of Wizard. I know, I know. He's got it. Journey to Silius. <laughs> Journey to Silius. <laughs> Shoot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that Mappy Land? Riff. Oh. Oh, good. No, what was no, no go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say Mappy Land. I pre-called. I don't know. I should. I can't believe I missed one. This is my one. Which what, what do you think? One, it I don't is? know. Yeah, um, I'm gonna guess. Dun, 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 I thought it was Mappy, but it's got to sure be Super now. Nintendo. Oh, no, like I don't a know. Nintendo game. Maybe it's Nintendo. I don't know. I can't believe I'm missing one. Well, keep, my first keep one. Keep rolling. Wrong. You can still guess. No, it's okay. I, I want to lose gracefully. What is it, Chris? You still got a chance. Go, go, go. Ducktales. Oh, oh wow! That hurt. That actually hurt. It's Kirby. Riff. Gun smoke. Dang. Gun dot smoke. So it is gun dot smoke. We can call it soon. I don't need to sit here and slaughter you guys for the next fifteen minutes. I mean, let's it. do like I actually ridiculous. love the the sound of it. It's so soothing. Okay, let's do like five more. Okay, like right, if this like is your more. ASMR section, guys. Right, is this go, double jeopardy? Go. These are double the points. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's it. Get them down to zero. Riff. Riff. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. Donkey Kong Country. I could have guessed that. And I didn't play it. <laughs> Style, too. That's just such great music. Here we go. Riff. Contra 3 Alien Wars. Oh, yeah, this is your game. <laughs> no death run. 
just coming with a flamethrower right now. Oh, damn, this song is bad. I love this song. Such a good one. Rip. Bubsy, Super Nintendo. Dang. Wow. <laughs> like really an odd Come on. <laughs> Let's go. All right, two more, two more. Rip. Aladdin, Super Nintendo. Dang. <laughs> <We're doing it. laughs> Guys, you can't play this game. It's just a rip. <laughs> Refund. Right. Last one is for all the points. Ooh, Whoever gets man. this, it's over. Okay, I'm, I'm in it. All right, everybody's in. <laughs> Rip. Oh. Strider <laughs> NES. Huh? Strider NES. Sounds like a half a note. I want to hear one note. <laughs> I just want to hear two notes. Please. All right, we'll give everyone one more last real try. La this is the actual last one for every point. Okay, okay. Come on, boys. I'm giving you guys a chance in this one. I All I needed was two I didn't notes. Get it right there. <laughs> Star Tropics 2. Nope. <laughs> uh, Mario 3. DuckTales Amazon theme NES. <laughs> two notes. Get out of here. I promise. What? Oh, my goodness. That's I'm sorry, awesome. boys. Very impressive. I'm going to give you Very a That was pretty good. That. I'm not going to lie. Everybody here. out there, impressive. I, wow. But that, I, w I would grant that to years of video games, but honestly, probably 80% because of editing. Just years of using video game music. It's like a, a Rolodex in the back of my head. All right. We're going to close that out. We're going to go on to our next topic, which is honestly a dicey one. But selling on whatnot can be dangerous. Oh boy, selling on whatnot can be dangerous. Should I jump into this, boys? Yeah, go ahead. All right, whatnot. We, Ricky and I, were never really resellers before, and whatnot came along. Whatnot, this is not sponsored. Whatnot is an <laughs> online selling platform where it's basically like eBay mixed with Twitch. And so when whatnot came along, Ricky and I started selling on whatnot. We're like, hey, this is cool. And now, might as well get it out of the way now. The number one complaint in the beginning was you guys have a YouTube following. You guys have people coming there. That's not fair. Let me be honest with you guys. How is it not fair that Ricky and I put 10 years into making a channel where we built an audience? It's like Joe Rogan starting whatnot and being like, that's, well, not Joe Rogan. I just gave myself a big flex. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, go with, let's go with like a C, let's go with like Screech or something from, from Saved by the Bell. Let's go low tier person. Oh, rip. Oh, he's, I didn't even know. See, now I feel horribly. <laughs> who's, a, who's a C tier celebrity that's currently... Alive. John Samos. John, well, he's that's not a, a list, dude. He's, he's high high pretty high. Yeah, okay. I put Chris on that pedestal of the. <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> <laughs> let's just put a, 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 B, a B movie actor somewhere, that, whatever, low tier, whatever. And if someone starts it, they've built in, uh, 10 years of doing something and then they start on selling on some platform and they have an audience. I've seen Chum Lee from Pawn Stars. There you go. He has whatnot. He has people watching him, of course. So before we get into whatnot being dangerous, I have to air it out that, of course, if you have some sort of, if an Instagram star went on, you know, an Instagram famous person, I don't even want to say star because I don't consider a star. <laughs> We're low tier. Instagram influencer, <laughs> whatever person started it, they'd have a following on there right off the gate. Yeah. So that's just part of it. When you work for it, it, it would be, it doesn't make sense for us to think of it another way. Obviously, if you're first time on, you've never done YouTube, you've never done Instagram, that you're hopping on, of course, you're not going to start and hey, look, there's 50 people on there. That's just not the way things work how followings work it's just not but i think the dangerous part i had to get that out boys sorry i've been holding on no that worries i think one of the questions you're trying to ask is what are the risks and rewards of being on that platform? no that wasn't the one i was trying to answer Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, then, well, well, all right well, then let's go with what you were thinking no no it's okay um basically yeah so whatnot when when youtubers first jumped on there was a lot of critique because people were overpaying for stuff which is true people were because it's their first time seeing these people on. It's their first time, you know, like, oh, shoot, these people are selling stuff. That's awesome. We want to buy something from the show. There's a lot of hype, so to say, even though I, I still never like feeling like we are worthy of being hyped. I always like to keep ourselves down here. But with that, um, it did happen. Yes, people were overpaying for stuff. As time went on, for sure, it's gotten down. When you sell on whatnot, the average now, even for us, is like retail or below. 
Yeah. It's more used for us as a platform to move things rather than make our money, right? But where it can be dangerous is for people, like say like Chris, who didn't have a YouTube thing, who didn't have a any sort of following, so to say, previously before they hopped on it. So you and your experience, I know you sold once. Be brutal. Be honest. How was it you didn't really have a following? Yeah, we brought some people in there because we're like, hey, follow our buddy. Yeah, we probably had like 130 people in there to start. So this it wasn't is a horrible the, example. <laughs> there. Well, because you guys helped promote that. Well, so let, we, let's let me, make it clear. We didn't promote. Not promote. We were ending our stream and we're like, hey, you should go jump in Chris's. He's starting one. Right. Yeah, and okay. so it was the first time we had ever gone on it. I say we. We did it at the store. Um, that whole experience was a little bit just even nerve wracking going live like that. Yes. But we did. We hopped in there. There was 130 people. We, to, to be honest, we got slaughtered. We got hammered. Financially. On just on the items that we were selling which yeah. which means what you mean by that is uh, if you don't understand he sold things that went for way less way less than yeah retail. it was fun we had a good great time we were chatting with people and yeah. and it was a fun time but from my perspective like with the stores where i can you know sell things for market price yes right like if a game sells on video game price charts for 30 dollars, we market at 30 bucks it's legend is all the chance is going to sell for 30 bucks mm. on there what i felt was definitely and again we only did it once but we took a big decrease mm. in what retail was yes um even compared to maybe if i put it on ebay yes. so that was my experience with it i think it's really hard on whatnot because you know it's your first time live you have to build a following and i i, I see the criticism that like you know you jump on youtube right and it's your first time on you're not necessarily taking a risk of losing money maybe you lose time you know effort energy uploading but on whatnot when it's your first time on you can you know lose money because in order to get a following you don't have to lose money to do so. A lot of people now aren't doing what, you know, a lot of new people have to do now is go on and just kind of list stuff, right? It's like a store. Yeah. You go on, you hang out. Hey, let me know what you want. This is 30 bucks. This is 20 bucks. This is 50 bucks. And I feel like that's your safest bet, but you're also not going to make a ton of sales that way because, you know, it's a store, you know, you get, you'll sell half the items because it's just someone's coming in. Hey, maybe I'll pay that price. Maybe I won't. Um, we've done it the way that, it started out in the beginning and a lot of people are doing in the beginning, but not everybody's doing it like that anymore. And that's, we're still auctioning things. We're an auction house at this point. It's the same way every week, 20 second auctions starting at $1. $1. We <laughs> go for it. It's good luck. It might be awesome or you might get screwed out of your butt. And, and it, I, what our, our wonderful friend Zelda's lullaby always says is it all evens out because there'll be <laughs> items where Ricky and I sell something. We're like, sweet. That went for 10% over what it should have or 20% even. And we're like, that's awesome. Great. That's whew. And then the next item's like, oh crap. That just went for $4 when it's a $70 item. And it's <laughs> happened to us multiple, multiple, multiple times. I think the biggest risk for people is when they come in new and they, without building a following first, they do the auction style, right? On good and, items, yeah. too. On that's good items. And I think that's where it can be items. scary for people who don't have a following. I don't like to say regular people because we're regular people, but we just had a, a following on something else before. So I feel like that's where the biggest risk is, is auctions and being a new seller. Now, Which is exactly yeah. what we did. Like, mm -hmm. we came on, and so we were like, oh, let's auction off some really good items in here. And then yeah. when we got hammered on them, I was like, okay, if I was ever to do this again, I would not put good good items on here unless you listed them for sale like not or a starting right. price but right. i would not auction really good good items that platform of like 10 or 20 seconds i feel like it's such a quick blip to you can just like you said it's a risk right Huge risk now if you're looking to move a lot of stuff then perhaps then that it's a good platform for it yeah but in my scenario with stores and stuff or even an ebay account if you're an ebay seller it might not be the right platform it's probably not for Got it. me um, I understand how it could be useful for people if you're looking to kind of move a lot of maybe mids, mid, low yeah. stuff. I mean, I'm not going to lie, though. We, we run high. Oh, yeah. Do you? We, we run stuff. like oh, the yeah. rarest items on the Internet high. Like right now, we're I mean, currently at the time of filming, we're running through those VidPro uh, PlayStation display cards. Those are like average of 40 to 200 dollars on eBay. We're those, running them at a dollar 20 yep. seconds. Those, those are the PlayStation one like. Yep. Um, yep. Toys R Us, remember what you used cards, to yeah, I guess you'd call them? Yeah, they're cards that you'd see at Toys R Us back in the day where you'd see the image and you take it up to the front and you buy your cards. But those are like eBay, 40 to 200 bucks average. I mean, low, 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 low sports game is like $20 sold. I definitely risked a lot on there. And it's almost like one of my biggest regrets is selling one of the things I shouldn't have sold. And it was the, the Atari Jaguar press kit. Yeah. And I think that's what like hurts me the most. I was like, I got it for a decent price, but I 
sold it basically under what I got it for, kind of. It was kind of like I broke even, but with fees and all that, it was like, oh, it really hurts because I'm like, man, that's that's a one off. Like the the rarity of it, the the overall history of yeah. what it was. I just I couldn't believe it. Like and, I, I did it. Yeah. And I so did. the big advantage is is that you guys are saving time. Like if you were to list all your items on eBay, we're probably don't have a... we're, we're probably getting like thirty to forty percent of value. But I don't have time. Nope. It's the time on eBay. Yeah. So it's yeah. a time. Sale. I'd rather make thirty forty percent and go buy whatever I want the next weekend and and get it and sell it low and move it quick and and just so a quick move. Yeah, move yeah. move move. I'm not going to make my max amount of money which is how i would probably use it in the future which i haven't ever gone on again after that one time but i yeah. probably what i would do is set aside some items that i'm like okay i'm okay with taking a lower value yeah. on this if it sells for less and trying to do that i think it's important too for people to know like it is kind of like a social media platform so yeah. you do and i get why people were upset in the beginning oh it's not fair the youtubers but in reality when someone works hard for something that's not unfair right if ricky's busting his butt at his job every day for eight years and he gets a promotion it's like that's not fair it's like yeah it is the guy worked his butt off for it you know so what i tell people who are new to it like hey if you want to get to that point you have to work for it you can't come on and be like why is there only 10 people in here you can't do that you can't come in expect a big you know following or expect everyone to want to be buying your stuff day one that's just not reality with anything it's not the reality with instagram it's not the reality with youtube it's not but for some reason there was a big push on YouTubers, people were upset at them. And of course, there was tons of shout out right now to our whatnot community because it is one of the they, coolest yes, they are awesome. communities of people. I love getting trolled too. It's the best. It is one of our <laughs> funnest <laughs> nights of the week. We it have really so is. much fun doing it. We love the people in there. And, you know, we call them the few and the proud in there because there's, there's like, you know, a few hundred people in there. And we just have fun and we love it. And it's an extension of our YouTube. It like it's like in our cinematic universe of what we do, so to say. And it makes it more personable with your fans. You know what I mean? It's Super like, personal, dude. Yeah. That's kind of reason why I threw up the Atari press kit because it's like we want it, we want it. And it's like oh. I have no regrets as far as selling stuff. I there. know we <laughs> sell super rare stuff. But uh, question: do, What do you guys think the longevity of that platform is? I don't know, and that's the because uh, yeah. it's so. It's I wouldn't say it's super new. It's but a couple years old, but really blew up in the last year, year and a half, maybe. And I don't know, I'm not, I actually know some of the people that work at one other, literally amazing people, some really good human beings. And, you know, we're not sponsored by them or anymore or anything. So everything I'm saying is what we think. I don't know the longevity. I've thought about that with Ricky before. I'm like, man, how long can this last? Yeah. Definitely the like getting the retail always and above retail. That was short lived. And we knew that we're like, this is not, everyone's going to think like, oh, I like those guys on YouTube and I'll pay. Cause I was doing it. I'd go on and buy a Pokemon card that I don't care about from Chum Lee just cause I wanted to. You know, or even Retro Rick or Phoenix Resale, my friends. And I'm like, yeah, all over, it's fun. You know, you're supporting. But yeah. we knew that would die. And now it's like, again, I think the longevity can be long because I know tons of stores, our good friends at Game Tower, who run stuff all the time on there. But it's, again, hey, the Virtual Boys, this price, this is, what do you guys want? So I started seeing, like, what they were doing because I was like, well, how can I incorporate this with my stores? And it was more a lot of, like, buy it now. It's like going around, they would call it, like, a game tour. I've seen some other game store owners do store this. Store tour. Too. Yeah. Yeah, store tour where you go around and it's like, if you see something you like, like this is the yep. price. So I get that, and it, I haven't done that, so I understand that that could be an option for people. But um, I just wonder, like from a buying perspective, like I like to buy in a lot of things. So I would go on Whatnot as a buyer, and I would find... Sorry, that, just, my ear was getting an earache, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to take that, that off. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> so Ooh, I, I'll take it off. I would find that... Um, it's, it's a time thing there as a buyer. Like if I want to go in and I'm like, uh, for, for myself, it might be yes. t-shirts, right? Say I'm looking for like yes. some t-shirts. I have to sit there for half an hour, an hour, hoping that there's one item that I might be interested Unless in. Unless it's in buy it now. Yeah. Unless it's in buy it now. Yeah. But I never really did the buy it now and whatnot. I'm always sitting there for the auctions. Got it. So, and this isn't just, this is also Instagram live. There was a lot of stuff I was buying on Instagram live. Yes. Where as a buyer, Initially, I was very hot on it. I was like, this mm. is awesome. I love to watch the guys. I feel like I was connecting with the people. I love to be able to comment. They would give me shout outs and like, yeah. kind of felt like you knew them. Yeah. What I just in naturally started to happen was like, I was like, dang, I don't want to sit there for like a half an hour to maybe see if something comes up. This is just me personally. Now, maybe some people love it so much, but well, I got burnt out on it a little bit well, after about what, a year of doing it. Well, this it is why really I, I mentioned that I mentioned that it's like a social media platform as well, because you also have to think of it like, it's a different world. It's not eBay, right? It's not a physical, stagnant online platform where you're just things listed and you don't have to do anything. You're there and you look at it as a YouTube channel. You look at it as a show. You can be 
entertaining. I've seen people do games and those people always have more people in their room because yeah. it is hard again to get burnt out and someone's again, there's no shame to it. However you want to sell is great, but just sitting there, here's the next item five minutes later. All right, here's this one. Maybe I'll list, but if you're having fun, you're engaging, you're doing games or just, you know, you work out that that type of more dry thing works for you. That's great. But I tell people, you got to look at it as in a way as to, would you want to watch that? And one of the biggest compliments that we ever got on that is people saying, I don't even buy stuff. I just like to hang out because it's fun. And to me, that's how it, it it's, it's it, for us, it was crucial because not everybody wants to buy things. Yeah, we have a few hundred people and some people are like, hey, it's not fair. You have so many people in there, but maybe 60, 40, what is it? Like 45 people yeah, normally something like that. 45 people buy things each night is kind of the, the average each night of how, and we have a few hundred items, you know, a couple hundred items. So I think that being aware that, you know, it is easy to get burnt out on because some people look at it as just like, you know, pretending like they're an eBay store. So you're just kind of like chilling, like here's that, here's that. But you have to realize as a viewer, they can get impatient, like you said, and be like, I'm a, I got a dip, you know? I, I think what helps us out too, though, is like all the stuff we're selling, like most of it is swap meat. So in my head, I'm like, oh, I paid this much for it at the swaps. I'm like, okay, cool. I at least made back what I wanted. It's paying for what for what we're doing for. So it's paying for our hobby. It's it's awesome. I mean, it, we, yeah, we make a little more, but it's Ricky it's just easy hit, to restock. You just hit a huge point. Yeah, and I think that's the sustainability depends on your how you're acquiring your stuff, right? Yeah. Sustainability is very short lived if you're paying ninety percent or eighty percent of what things are worth. Right. But when you're like us and you're going to swap meets and you're searching, you're digging, you're people have to realize that too, we're putting in the time, the energy, the effort every weekend, five in the morning, taking time away from our family, talking to vendors, building relationships, driving to booths to get things, driving to stores to get things, getting them for, you know, 30 percent of market and then being able to, to not be like, oh, that burned when we only made, you know, we spent 10 bucks and made, you know, an extra 15 on that. You know, that doesn't burn us. But if we're out buying stuff for 90 percent of market, selling it. And being like, shoot, we made four dollars or lost money. It's not worth. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that the sellers will ever go away. It, it is an awesome, unique platform. I mean, the the fact that you can sit there and watch people, and you guys are entertaining people again. Some of the other ones that I've watched, like I would do the same thing. I would just go in there just because I was used to going in there. I'd want to just see the you know the guy talk. This again was on a lot of Instagram live stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just wonder if there will be more and more buyers similar to me, where it's not that I hate the platform. I don't have anything against it. It was just a time thing. Like, all right, I don't have yeah. necessarily time to sit here. Yeah. And if the buyers aren't there, do the sellers then start to get discouraged? And I'm talking totally. long term, like ten years from totally now. Totally though. Is it you know? And even um, I had worked w talked with whatnot just a little bit. We were looking at having them a sponsor of Retro World, and just from in some some talkings with them, they had kind of indicated that they were most interested at that time of like getting more buyers. That was their thing. They For wanted sure. more buyers on For there. Sure. I don't think they were have a t having a tough time getting sellers. Yes. They wanted to keep buyers on there. Yeah. So that's only my only thought with it. Yeah. Is, is not so much from a sell selling perspective, just how long that can Yeah, last, and I think that's why they're know? smart. Like any brand, anything in the world, what do you do when you turn on TV? You bring someone in that has some of, of a following, whatever it may be, to talk about it so more people are exposed to it. It's not going to be for everybody. Right. But it get you know gets that's why they have on YouTubers or people from I mean heck they have celebrities on there no, all they had the time. A, they yeah. had a, what Post is Malone. It? No, but it was uh, yeah, Rolling Loud. They did Rolling Loud on it, and they sold all their merch on there. Yeah, they had, really? uh, the, wow. the cast and they of, had seven thousand people watching. Cast of Cobra Kai was on there. I mean, they have oh, yeah. real people because that that's their goal, which is smart. They want to get you know, of course, they'll get more buyers as well. But they, I mean, more uh, sellers as well, but they want to get buyers there. So it makes sense for right. the sellers. Yeah, I think the buyers is the base. Well, they're they're mutually. Yeah, you need both for sure. Have to because you need that cool stuff like rolling loud. You need guys like you. Yeah, but the buyers 100 percent have to be there. Yeah. yeah, we love it as far as us like and oh. again, not sponsored. We not only have a good time, it funds our collecting. We don't get rich off it by any means. We yeah. make a little bit of money at most for all the work we put in. But it's. It's an experience for us. It's with the community. We make a little money and it just, it basically lets us game hunt for free on the weekends for I think, us. I think oh, what's it's, fun, it's fun about it. Yeah. I think what's fun about it is that we're kind of running it like a production, like yeah. a show. Like every time we go on Thursday, we go to dinner together and then it's like, all right, show time. And it's like, we're having a good time. Like just, this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's just like a nice conversation <laughs> with your social fans. Like. I mean, yeah, this is great. No, it's fun. Honestly, and like this too. It's so fun. We got to do this. We have fun. We go eat after. Normally, one person can't go. Normally, it's Ricky, but this time, Curtis can't. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. All right. And do you think? Um, Wait, I was gonna let that end it right there. Beto, do we have time for a little more? We'll pay you. Don't worry. Pay you. Don't worry. Uh, time is money. I got you, bro. 
All right, yeah. let's just go to the next one then. Yeah, we'll just do. And I'll cut this. Um, all right, we'll do topics. This one. Go for it, bro. Ready? Hey. All right, we're gonna go into our next one. It's a current swap meet competition now versus then. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Can and I? Can I? Stupid YouTubers yeah. ruining. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> roll on. Ruining oh this my story. god, you took the words right <laughs> go ahead, out. Say it, bro. You like, it up. All right, back then I felt like it was just me. Bags of video games. Now YouTubers, game hunters, million people out there. And by when I say back then, I started uh, flea market and swap meet hunting back in like 2008, I want to say, it was when I really started getting into it. And no joke, I used to take, this was in North Las Vegas, not these okay. the flea market here, but literally bags and bags of video games. At that time, most Nintendo games were a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, just all over the place, yeah. everywhere you could find. Nowadays, totally different world, totally different. Do you, do you think it's because of YouTube? Um, yeah, probably a fair okay. amount. Well, no, uh, some of it, not all of it. A fair Percentage. amount of it. Majority uh, on YouTube, you think, or no? Probably 50% okay. at least. Okay. Because, and it's not just you guys, of course. of course. I mean, there's been thousands of game hunting videos for, for a solid yeah. many, many years now. And I, people love it. You know, it's exciting when you, and I like to watch them still. I like, to, even though I go out and hunt, I'll watch you guys hunting, <laughs> you know, to see what you guys are getting. I, I like, think it's I awesome to watch that I think stuff. I have to point out, because so many people have made it clear that they don't know. We have another, and most people don't know. When they see the, when I see the comments, we have a, another YouTube channel called Pixel Game Squad coming up in 100K where it's all about game hunting. Yeah. So I just have to point out so many people are like, "What are you talking about? This other game? You guys don't game hunt. You're a podcast." <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah. So and it's okay. I mean, really, the way around it is get there earlier. <laughs> yeah. Now like a like a you know vampire hunter almost. You have to be there at four in the morning. It seems yep. like four thirty. Versus I used to roll in at like nine, <laughs> ten o'clock. Ricky, do you think that that what what the competition is now is a lot of it's because there is more. Plain and simply, the answer is yeah. There's a ton of competition now. Yeah. Do you think that we play not necessarily us, but game hunters on YouTube play a huge part, or do you think it's something else? I think it is a little bit us. I just. I just think it's it's people like realizing like, dude, I forgot about this and I, I want it now. Like, th like think of all the shows nowadays. Like when I watch um, Toys That Made Us, Toys That Made Us, or um, what, what's that show with the kid? Uh, Wonder Years, <laughs> The Simpsons, <laughs> Married with Children. Dude, you're throwing my head out now. Like, uh, the, uh, at Goldbergs. Goldbergs. So when you watch the Goldbergs, I Close. I, I want to buy like all that stuff. Like I want the, my old Transformers again. I'm like, dude, I have Transformers, but I want more. Like, I feel like all these shows are also coming out, like showing you back at what you had back in the day. You're like, dude, I want that. I forgot about all about that. So it's, I, I feel like it's yes, it's a lot of YouTubers because, yeah. I mean, well, and not even the game hunters also because yes, I'll say plead guilty when we're guilty. Yeah. But also, I mean, besides the game hunters, there are a million YouTube channels before us like that aren't game hunting like AVGN, Metal yeah. Jesus, not saying I'm blaming these people. I love, by the way, Metal Jesus, shout out. I love you, bro. He watches this channel. <laughs> I love um, you. These guys are collecting stuff too rather, and whether that's feeling the swap meet, but it's definitely getting people like, oh shoot, I forgot about this game. Oh, now I do want to find Action yeah. 52. I think it's like a mix of those things, right? People discover YouTube and they go, oh shoot, look, those people are reviewing those really good games. And then they run across the game chasers or other hunting channels and go, oh, that's a good way to get them. The swap meet. <laughs> Can I admit fully? Yeah. We've been, Ricky and I, and this is not tooting our horn. I always consider Ricky and I low tier people. But we will say that we have been to the swap meet more times than you can count. Thank you, everybody who watches and, and game hunts. Seriously. But where people are like, dude, I just found it, the swap meet, Bubble Bobble 2 right here and i'm like dude that's awesome they're like and i just started game hunting because i found your channel and i'm like oh <laughs> cool dude, that has been that recent too that at, golden, at golden west too oh yeah. at oh, our yeah. spot oh my god you have up. no idea yeah, I mean, really, oh they let you know what they found dude. oh yeah, they show us i'm just like dear god a couple weeks ago those two guys are like yeah pocky and rocky two five oh, right dude, before we got to the booth oh, that one. i'm like oh Yes. <laughs> so how it's evolved for me now at the swap is when I used to hunt back in 08 and for years and years and years after that, I was always just video games, looking yeah. video games, video games. Video games. Yeah. I have since long thrown that out. Chances of finding any <laughs> video games are very, very minimal. I am happy coming home with my, I found <laughs> 10, 10, 10 stacks of CDs. <laughs> oh, I got some cassettes. <laughs> oh, do it. Hold it in. Hold it I in. Uh, well, I, I think a big way to, Co to combat is that the word combat the word combat game hunting you know that that's really what it was the swap meet was game hunting for such yeah. a long time it was 
game hunting, game hunting, game hunting. But I think which we talked about in earlier podcasts, diversifying our portfolio of yes. what we collect completely has helped that because I will say this. I admit that we played a big part. I admit because we hear it. This isn't me gloating. I would never want to come off prideful, but we've heard it so many times that we know that a lot of people are going because of us. Yeah. But I've also noticed after that, like we first came out and we got, you know, some notoriety and people started going out. A lot of those same people have also diversified what they're into. So a lot of those same people that I used to be like, ah, oh, crap, they're here again. They're going to want all the games. They've gone like, oh, no, dude, I don't even care. I collect purses now. Oh, no, dude, I'm collecting. I do like vintage technology. Yeah. Oh, we have guys, even guys like Tony and them who will be like, oh, yeah, here, dude, take this game. Like, go, go for it. Yeah, I don't really care. Like, I do this. Or like Blake who collects adult things and a lot of people yeah. think, you know i mean a, a, a lot of people collect different things and i think that's how we have a friend on the channel his name is blake his beautiful red hair Love and uh, he's a young guy and he collects a uh, very qu- more risque more questionable <laughs> items yeah, especially behind the curtain but, yeah he's you got all that research <laughs> yeah yeah sure, sure. Yeah, tony says that too and i would say uh being on like having the camera out and all that does that change the price of things when you go to a vendor sometimes it sometimes it, it work when it works it works I like pretty good i like how ricky's using it he's like oh yeah when it works oh, it yeah. works I'll i say, mean go, go, no no go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. okay I'll, I'll say in the beginning and I, and i have to admit i don't like it now looking back i uh you know i don't necessarily like bargaining anymore oh, yeah. with the camera on mm-hmm. I used to like it. I didn't use it as a tool to be like, give you. It was just to document it, right? Like, yeah, Pawn Stars or or American Pickers or back then Game Chasers. You know, that's who I was watching to get this inspiration from. And I'd be like, dude, I just want to get the deal on camera, right? Yeah. Like, I just I just want to get it. Like, people want to see that negotiation. And no shame to anybody that does it. I mean, no. it's totally yeah. fine. Um, but for some reason, in the past like year, I've gotten more like, eh, I don't really want to do the negotiations with the camera rolling because I do know that there are people who will adjust the price because the camera's on. And I never want them to feel, and again, no shame to anybody doing it. I never want them to feel after like, oh man, I kind of did it for the camera. You know what I mean? I don't want them to feel like they were pushed into doing it. Now, I will say there are also businesses that are aware, you know, that we have a channel and they, that they'll, they'll want us to come to their store or to their place to promote it and be like, yeah, please put the camera, put the negotiation. We want that because that's marketing, you know, for them, it's smart marketing. You know, you want your audience to see your specific, that specific, your store, whatever it may be. But in most cases now at the swap meet though, I feel like the the camera thing has kind of dwindled away. Sometimes I'll leave it on on accident or something. Yeah. We we don't film that anymore. We don't film the negotiation. That's, Only with Chris. That's a good, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the, dude, I'm telling you, like when I'm with them, again. when I'm with you guys, I just stop hunting because I'm like, when I, once I go into a booth, it's like they see the camera, like all oh, these guys got the money. Oh, that's true. It backfires think too. It backfires I forgot about more. that. Yeah, it does. It does back. I forgot. A lot of people think that because you're in YouTube, you're a millionaire. And they're like, you got that YouTube money. I'm like, I know I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube money is, uh, let me say, on YouTube, I'll be f- completely forthcoming about it the the youtube itself if you're big is great but for where we're at now it's about like sponsorships and stuff like that so the youtube money itself is like you're paying for gas money all your things your your items if you're lucky so that youtube money thing you have to be pretty high level yeah to be making what people consider youtube money like this guy's probably making 15 grand a month you know on youtube I'm curious what other items when we talked about back to diversification what are you guys like other than video games and maybe action figures. <laughs> what else are you guys looking for when you're there? I'm curious. Ooh, shirts, lady. shirts, yeah. shirts, display items, hats. display items, hats. Yeah. Curtis, you're looking for VHS. hats. Oh, yeah, VHS. VHS is huge. I'm always looking for paper too. Paper. You're like paper, big dude. Time. I mean, like I found that thing that was from Boeing. It was like the mail order brides, and I was like, why am I buying this? That's how you, you, you got married. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to. I was going to. No I mean, wonder. my wife is AI, right? Because like I haven't. You guys technically. Bro, we so, still. Yeah. We, go for Curtis, we've seen we've seen a picture of his wife. Yeah. Very beautiful woman, definitely above Curtis's level. 100%. And we make jokes grade. with him all the time. <laughs> and we have yet to see her. We invited her to a, a party, never came around. The other serious. day, I was teaching Curtis how to like do like like YouTube shorts, like teaching him. And yeah. His wife was there, and bro, she was talking to me off camera. And I was like, she's like <laughs> it's like she's like Siri or something. Hi, Hi Riff. Like, how are you doing? Hi, Riff. I love you, Curtis. 
Poor Curtis. I love you're not my punching bag. I love you. <laughs> I love being the punching bag. I'm buying your dinner tonight. No, again. no. Okay, oh wait, but, you can't go with us tonight. Perfect. You lost yeah. your chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, one of these things, I guess, I like we have answered this, but I kind of want to reiterate it. Huh? How do you find the motivation to keep this going for so long, even on your off days, finding things? Honestly, it's it's to the point where it's a must, right? Like if I don't go, I almost don't feel as good like mentally that day you're talking about hunting yes yeah it's going true. to the swap meet or just yeah, hunting i mean you can general, have a dip, yeah and man you can have i am on board with you it is such a part of my life yep like i don't feel right if i don't don't go out to the swap meet it it's so integral to my week like feeling good Let, and not because i'm missing out on stuff it's just so well, exciting i will see the fomo is real too though bro like when i am like traveling like i travel next week i'm going to youtube summit with caleb I literally the other night I was like laying in bed. I'm going, man, Ricky's going on Saturday. I'm going to be there. My brain, I'm like, shoot, what's he going to find? What's Dusty going to have for him? And I'm like, I shouldn't be thinking like this, but it's a real thing. I'm like, and it's not even about the fine necessarily. Of course I say that, but I'm like, yeah. it's like that moment. Uh, I, I want to be there with Ricky and Chris and Curtis and Tony when they all, when they find that I'm going, dude. And I see the, the little smirk on Ricky's face when he's like stumbling and Curtis is over there. And everyone, it's just, it's a, it's a motivational must. And that's what keeps me motivated is just the fact it's almost like going. I heard someone make a reference saying that he doesn't even drink coffee. He likes that feeling of going and the vibe of waking up, rubbing his eyes out and, and calling up Starbucks, placing or showing up and being like, yep, yep, over here, riff over here. And they give him his drink and he's almost like, I don't care about that. That I wanted that fun of going. And I was like, that's interesting. I judged for a second in my head, but I'm like, wait, that's obviously, of course, I care about the items but in my head. I'm like. That's kind of how I am with the games. Like, I want that fun of going to get the yeah. items. So I got over that. Like, uh, I still love love the hunt, love finding stuff, hunting in general for yeah. all sorts of different things. But the idea of going to find, like, the big one or, like, got to find, like, amazing pieces. Like, I lost that a long time ago. Mm. Maybe because I just didn't find those yeah, yeah. for a long time. When they happen, they're amazing. Yeah. But in between all those, there's a lot of just, like, eh, it was an average time so i got very used to just being accepting of like i still somehow come home with like bagfuls a trunk full of stuff yep. every time and i'm okay with like not going every weekend i'll miss some so i yeah. don't have as much of the fear of missing out okay. other than hanging with you guys but i'm not i i'm much more you do still no no so for me it's more of a like we've talked about it. it's more of like stress reliever like this is like yeah where we go it's our little world like where we yeah i don't know if it's social interaction yeah and we got all the boys dude it's not to, it's it's fun to go because all the boys are there it's like you get so you meet so many people so make so many friends it's very rare i will tell you from years of doing this on youtube most a lot of the comments are people saying you guys don't know how lucky you are not about the swap meets but to have a group of buddies who show up week after week and and go hang out and just be buddies together and i think that's something you couldn't and it's funny i've almost moved like 10 times and I swear on my life, you guys think I'm kidding. One of the things that holds me back that I tell my wife is like, I can't leave. Like, I can't leave my boys. Like, it's, like I can't imagine not having that part of my life. And it's not about, no, I can't, can't imagine not finding Mario. No, it's about, I can't not imagine texting you. Hey, you here? Okay, see you at the chronic talk after. Right? What time are you there? Hey, what'd you get? What do we, I, I just can't, that feeling of not having that to me. I don't know if it's like a child, like needing to wean off of a blanket or something, but my brain's like, I need that. Like you said, it's like, I've heard Ricky at times when he's like, yeah, I can't go this weekend. And he's like, and I can hear it in his voice. He's like, I tell my wife, like, no, I, I need to go. Like, I, I, I ask my wife go. every Friday night. I'm like, we doing anything on Saturday? She's like, nope. I'm like, okay, I'm going to the flea I'm market. Glad I'm glad my, yeah. I'm my going. wife doesn't wake up in time for that. Like, well, you can't set I'm the done. AI to turn on until after it. <laughs> <laughs> She's still charging. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> but um i'm with you i think it is a very unique thing because i've hunted in vegas where i hunted solo by myself at the flea market it was always a solo experience getting up at the crack of dawn by yourself spending all day by yourself yep. when i hunted in connecticut very much the same thing I've hunted other places and this only you guys have been hunting out here longer than i yeah, have yeah. so when i started hunting with you guys and blake and then Chris, good yeah, yeah. friend, and other good friends, and now it's exponentially grown. I think it is a very, very unique situation. So unique, yeah. yeah it, it, it's and it's awesome. Absolutely love it. And we, and where you're not competing with each other, really, you are, but you aren't. You, are, you know, you you're are. trying to find stuff, but I, you're very like. I give big props to a lot of YouTube people who do it by themselves because 
when I'm by myself on those very, very rare weekends when I'm like in Palm Springs or some of my family and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go to the store and I find something big. I'm like, yeah, hippie skippy. Like, where's my, where's, <laughs> where's my, my where's, where's like, the cheering crowd? Like, you did it, bro. It's like, you're the best game hunter in the world. You know? Yeah. You know, it's like, I, it's not obviously though, I'm exaggerating, but you like, I don't get that same. And that for me really does prove to me that it's not about the stuff. Because I could find something really rare. And of course, I'd be like, sweet, either I could, this is a great piece for the collection, or oh, shoot, I can you know make good money on this and buy whatever I want. But without the people there, it just doesn't hit the same. For me, there is one other thing that I do. So maybe because I did it by myself for a long time, where it is True. very meditative for me. I get yeah. that. So I get that. when I like maybe messaged you guys last week, and I think I'd send you a couple pictures, I was there on a Sunday. Normally, we go on a Saturday. Yes. I was there on a Sunday. It's a much different experience. All the hunters are gone. It's very quiet. There's still a lot of people there. Yeah. It's different vendors. Yeah. But it is, and it's a Sunday. Sundays always feel a little bit different, right? Yeah. But it was calm. It's peaceful. Everyone's it's, at church. Everybody's at church. <laughs> And I can just Chris. cruise <laughs> up and down. Yeah, I wasn't at church. Chris's new game hunting channel, Hunting to Hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. But it was very calm, and it's very, very, very soothing, that Sunday hunting. I'm not going to find big, crazy stuff. Well, I mean, not to rub it in your face, but Ricky and I went to a Sunday one time in the last like year, and we found like $4,000 of boxed Game Boy games. <laughs> oh, you killed it. I think that was that fine. Yeah. Yeah. That was Sorry, crazy. man. Yeah, You'll learn how to hunt one My day. favorite was in. <laughs> hey, my Missed favorite was when uh, Riff went to Florida and I sent him the picture of his Sonic binder he couldn't get. Oh, dude. <laughs> that almost ruined my vacation, bro. I was on vacation with my family and we were in Florida for a really rad weekend and just hanging out. And he sends me a picture. He's like, I found Sonic animation stuff. And I was like, no, you didn't. And he sends me a picture. And I'm like, Honey, like we, uh, is there like, I think I left the stove on. We should have fly back into this vacation back home, man. <laughs> you just see him start to put the gas on. He's like, I'm not going home. And this There's is no when way. he's like, oh, and the Mario stuff's coming. And this was all that big animation thing we had. And this was like a big deal. And I literally remember being so like, this was one of the few times it was about the item. And he's like, what are we, what are, what are you willing to pay on this stuff? Cause he's like, I'll go in with you, like do this and that, you know? And I literally text him back, whatever it costs, <laughs> uh, whatever yeah. it costs. He's like, I found Mario brothers animation stuff. And he's like, how much do you go? And I said, whatever he says, pay it. And we don't need to disclose what we got it for, <laughs> but we still paid, get paid up. But it was uh, yeah. The, the, I, like I said, of course it's not all about the fines, but if, if it's something extremely the mega rare, then of man. course the, the fine is going to be. You know, front and center. If it's this crazy big, yeah. Last night you almost got the blockbuster <sighs> stuff. We don't want to tell Chris or anything. Yeah. We don't need to go on it. But we almost bought some vintage, major blockbuster, crazy giant stuff. grails blockbuster drop off game slot Ooh. and all that stuff. Wow, it didn't, awesome. didn't work out. Uh, we're gonna have to close this out, and we're gonna say all the new podcasts will be linked into our description below, and we we are very thankful for all the support and everything that we're doing. So wait, we Ooh. gotta give one shout out to, to the Christian podcast. On Google, Boom. go give them a five yes, star review. Give them a review. That's, that's where we're Big at. Time oh. <laughs> they are awesome people. They we rent this studio space from them, and they are awesome people. Good, good people, and we they uh they mean the world to us. They're 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 changing our life one podcast at a time <laughs> for better or worse. Real quick, quick guess. How long until we're canceled? Anybody? One more. One more. Probably make it one more. All right. <laughs> it's good knowing you guys. See you on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs>